because she's like, which one of you is Ethan? And, and they're all, like, everyone's just staring. Yeah, he's like, it, it, it's me. And she's like, okay, get in. And she, well, sure, she kisses him. Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay, excuse me, ma'am, this is ma'am? a school. Ma'am, you are, you wearing... are an adult woman? He's also... She does seem she's like 20 so much. Like, she's an adult so woman and this is an underage boy. In like and basically on property. Lingerie. Not that that's the thing that makes it bad, but, but it's just bad it's just all like, around. Ma'am, you can't wear that around kids. Like, ma'am, you can't, you can't wear... just kiss children that you don't know. You just can't yeah. kiss children. It's like, Stop. what are you? What is happening? So But again, guys, she's been claimed from the dark. So she oh, duh. Just <laughs> so it's fine. I get it. <laughs> For those who can see, my background says the book was better. I made this in Canva. Oh, that's wow. Why I, that's actually why I was late. And I know it's just a white background with black text, but you know what? It took me a second. So I have a surprise for Cullen. I listened to the book. <laughs> Even no. though we said that we weren't going to do it. That was my intellectual surprise. And you know what makes me so angry is that... This movie means I have to defend a book that's not good <laughs> on this fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I am so mad. I welcome back to the podcast. Welcome back. Uh hi, I'm Cullen. And I'm Hannah and in pain. And in pain. And today we have uh, a former resident of the great state of South Carolina. Kayla. Hello. Yes. Oh, what a rude representation. <laughs> uh, All right. Can I can I just 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 from the top, something I need you both to know <laughs> that is wildly important to me is that these books were written from by two women from Pennsylvania uh, that I don't believe have ever been set foot in the state of South Carolina. Like right. I nothing i have read this entire book series now granted that was in high school it, it, it's been it's been a moment but uh there are some things i could tell that from everything about the book for Again. starters i mean the okay nobody in the books cullen there's two things that 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 do tie back to the movie one is uh that it is a mandatory part of their history grade that they participate in a civil war reenactment yeah and i need you to know that like in no way that just remotely true i don't care how rural south carolina you're talking in no way on god's green earth is anyone sending a 16 year old to like be in character as like a confederate soldier no that is <laughs> also that- <laughs> I'm I'm looking at your background, Cullen, and I'm just like being reminded that Emma Thompson was in this movie. And I'm yeah. like, Oscar winner Emma Thompson. I mean Yeah, light of my life, Emma Thompson. I I have so many thoughts and feelings and opinions. Obviously, because we cannot, we're discoursing before we even get through the intro. Like Hannah uh, popped yeah. in the Zoom <laughs> call. The intro. And- Let's go. Oh, give me that lore. <laughs> Kayla I'm was ready. like hit the hit the button hit the button so we're we're ready so we're talking about uh beautiful creatures we all came ready the last 10 minutes of the movie i'm fresh off the movie so it is up here and my poor boyfriend was hearing me going just like i was so i just needed to get through that i'm okay now we're talking about 2013's beautiful creatures it is part of the post twilight supernatural romance boom uh in the like early 2010s late 2000s had i seen this movie no 
Kayla actually suggested we do this one. Um, I demanded. I demanded. <laughs> yeah, this was my first, I had seen the trailer. So Kayla, what is your history with Beautiful Creatures? I mean, I saw the trailer and I remember there was like yelling, sing in the rain. It was like, you know, I, I was intrigued by this. Like it looked cool. It looked like Southern Gothic. I was like excited that it was, um, you know, something that was set in South Carolina. So then I did a deep dive and read like all of the books and went to see the movie. And it was, I would say, a pretty, <laughs> pretty big disappointment um I do think it's like for those who haven't watched the movie or read the books which would be um most people that are on this planet um I I, I think it is fair to say like to contextualize it that it is you know beautiful creatures is to twilight as divergent is to hunger games it's like yeah. this is your analogous not quite as quality not quite as big of a you know cultural touchstone kind of imitation to, to fill that space yeah yeah that's a really good comparison yeah although I found the book to just be much more charming and yeah just and a much easier read than Twilight and you know if you want to hear all my thoughts on the Twilight book go back and listen to that episode but like it was still a hard read because I was like I gotta watch this movie yeah and and it was a wild book. It's not good, but like there's stuff going on. There's some interesting concepts, many of which are not played with in this movie. And so my history with this, with this movie and book series, very short. It is literally, I don't know, a week. Um, Cause I started the book about a week ago and then uh, watched the movie, finished it like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Fresh, fresh. I don't, I don't remember seeing the trailer for this. That's what's kind of interesting. I just, it's just like, for me, it just like popped into existence. <laughs> Never saw a trailer. And it came um, your whole life. You watched it, you read the book, you watched the movie. It was my whole life for this whole week, basically. Wow. Um, <laughs> and I, and there were some parts in the book that I was like, oh, this could be kind of interesting in the movie. Okay. Not in the movie. Cool. Okay. We're doing everything very different. And why are we even calling this a beautiful creatures movie? The, I'm... The, the changes are all just like weird. It's not even that I necessarily feel like they help move the book a lot. I mean, I'm trying to think like one of them is uh, that the curse only affects women. I, I think that in the books, it's like all Everybody. sides of the Ducan family. Mm -hmm. Also that like, also Macon is an incubus in the book yes, and that's just like, not a thing yeah there's just no but I also don't there's no rules to and this is kind of more about like the lore but you know there's no rules to their magic and I don't really know that other than like this vague idea of the universe needs to have light and dark like there needs to be right. balance there's not really any structure to what their power or like why is one of them a vampire and one of them like a succubus like why is her cousin just like yeah they call her yeah. a siren and I'm like a siren what? But well okay so what? she's not it's... a siren okay here we go here's some book more I'm glad that I read this book so she's not a siren, like literally the creature of a siren. It's a type of caster. Uh -huh. Just as her Aunt Dell, who is very kooky and honestly is a complete slam to Aunt Dell in the book, who I found delightful. Aunt Dell is a palimpsest, which means she can like uh, see through time. Um, mm -hmm. So like every caster has a type. So the Larkin kid, he's an illusionist. That's his power. Mm -hmm. Ridley being a siren she can just make you do anything she wants she's just very seductive so that's yeah. sort of where that comes in and her being a natural I think is just because she can control the weather and earth and stuff she's okay. she's an but she's also the turn bucket. movie theaters into like civil <laughs> reenactments and I know that's more of a movie thing but it's just I think an example of how the movie just like I the movie yeah bastardizes a lot of things that I actually thought make the story interesting and yeah there's some character assassination in this oh, wow. in this movie um and it's pretty I've come to the conclusion this movie hates women um drink every time you hear oh that's absolutely bitch. true 
<laughs> they never yeah. curse in that book. I think maybe he says damn one time and he gets yeah. uh like a, a verbal smack in from Ama. It's like, don't yeah. you use that language around here? So I just, you know, I have a lot of thoughts and opinions and feelings. Wow. Nice. So yeah, because I my thing that I said about this was after the Twilight experience was that so much happens. I didn't understand most of it, but events yeah. do happen. And th- you can't really say that about they Twilight. They cut to a be lot fair. of events. <laughs> Where Twilight, yeah. they had to add events for the movie. This, they're like, oh God, we got a ton to take out. Which I don't envy the people who wrote this because there's a lot they had to make sense of and put into a structure of a film. I will give them that. No. But then there's a lot that they just like ran with. Like, why is the house, why does the house look like, it looks like the house from Beetlejuice. <laughs> it does. Their VR. Yeah. yeah. He was in there. Yeah. The house changes in the book, but it changes drastically. Like at one point there yeah. is this like cold modern, but like by the end when she's feeling trapped by the fact that her birthday is coming up, which is so much more of a big deal, it literally turns into a prison. Like what Lena thinks of as a prison, it like is attached to her and Macon's like thoughts oh. and feelings. And so it's kind of interesting. It's weird. But yeah, it's like always this uber modern in the movie, and it's so strange. Yeah, yeah. It's well, like it's a, they'll, 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 they'll jump mapping. like some, they'll jump like some like like leaves, you know. What I mean? yeah. It's like it's fall. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, I think just like that uber modern version of that house on the inside, where it's like dilapidated, mm-hmm. old style plantation on the outside, is like. Millennials are ruining old houses, except this millennial is a seven-year-old British man with a terrible Southern accent. So, oh my God, it's so crazy. This, I, I was going to say this movie was based on a Pinterest board. I, I didn't really <laughs> believe the book existed. I believe there was, here's a someone like, I made a Pinterest board called Southern Gothic Witch Romance. And they're like, I can turn this into a movie. <laughs> uh, my my other, other theory was it was a, a playthrough of Sims 3 Supernatural. Oh, yeah. uh, but mm-hmm. unfortunately, uh, the timeline doesn't add up uh, because that that was released in 2012. This movie came out in 2013. It was already in production. Uh, yeah. It is based on a 2009 novel by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. It's part of the. Who have Cab- never been to South Carolina? I just I do not believe that those women have ever said what in South Carolina. No. It's like in Toy Story. I don't believe that man's ever been to medical school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is a four-part book series, uh, has a sequel series. This movie was written and directed by Richard La Graveness. Uh, he adapted the f- musical last five years to film. He also did story okay. on the movie Disenchanted, the Enchanted sequel, which mm, you can hear me sense. talk about on Life's But a Song. Uh, it's an older yeah. episode now, but I had thoughts on that story. Uh, so things are lining up is what thing, you're saying. Yeah, things are lining up. Uh, the The film stars Alden Ehrenreich. Ehrenreich, yeah. Uh, Ehrenreich, yeah. Yeah, from Solo and Cocaine Bear. Uh, uh, <laughs> Alice Englert, Jeremy Irons, Viola Davis, Emmy Rossum, Thomas Mann, and Emma Thompson. So uh, this movie was released on Valentine's Day 2013. So almost 11 years ago from when this episode is coming out uh, by Warner Brothers Pictures, received mixed reviews from audiences and critics, grossed 60.1 million worldwide uh, with a $60 million budget. Oh, good for them. They made a million dollars. No, a hundred thousand dollars. Not even not even marketing. Marketing. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way. This was a box office bomb. The sequels were canceled. Uh it has an episode of How Did This Get Made? Uh, so that's fun. Oh my god, there is. And I have listened to it, but I never put those two movies. I get this movie mixed up with Beastly. Oh, Beastly, oh, which will a movie oh, that Vanessa I saw Hudgens. twice. Seen that twice in theaters. Colin knows. <laughs> I'm a kind of a diehard Vanessa Hudgens fan. Oh, that's so funny. We have a Vanessa Hudgens fan, and then we had Vanessa Hudgens' enemy a few episodes ago. Oh, get us, get us together. <laughs> For Beastly. Who's the Vanessa I Hudgens fan? I love that anti. idea. I love that idea. So we're switching up our format. You know, we're trying new things. So instead of a lore dump, we're going to do a lore sprinkle. 
a lore crop dusting, if you will. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, we yeah. will, as an I'm event, continue. As, as an event that comes up that relates to the lore, where we'll be like, all right, let's talk about this concept. Uh huh. And so I have some in the book comments as well. Okay. Not perfect. Too. I don't care enough about the book, but I do have some some thoughts. Uh, so welcome to the fictional town of Gatlin, South Carolina. This kid, Ethan Waite, uh, he's dreaming about Evanescence. Uh, this woman with like long dark hair blowing. He's currently seeing her. He wakes up. This is what got me. He wakes up in sneakers. In his shoes. That's diabolical. <laughs> yeah, I was like, are we sure this kid isn't the devil? Uh and he, he does it twice in the movie, I think. <laughs> yeah, but this is like he didn't pass out. He just wakes no. up. And then it's like, oh, he's going running. But I'm like, you would have to wake up and, and put, put your, your shoes, shoes on. on. Yeah. yeah uh, this kid don't like him. Yeah. So he starts running um, and he's like, so I always think of it's not a quote from anything real. It's a quote from a fake movie my siblings and I were trying to like write as kids about this kid who hates his town that was only famous for having a dog with a big brain. And he said, my town was a <laughs> cancer, was a cancerous sore on the face of the earth. Right. That was like the opening line of this fake movie. Uh, and that's basically what this kid says. That's, that's the essence <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, it's like, I, sorry. I, oh no, Colin. You go no, ahead. you go ahead. You go, go off. Well, okay. In, in my notes, I did write down like quite a couple, uh, lines from this um running I hate my town monologue um but the one that really stuck with me was um I can understand why young men signed up for the civil war anything is better than standing still like really (laughs) anything anything Anything. (laughs) I thought the same thing yeah this is like a crazy intro also the thing is that like Ethan is very like he's very liberal and it's like, my town is one of those towns where it's like, uh, churches, banned books. Well, specifically, oh yeah, you know, the civil war, we just like let them win. Or, you know, it's like very, uh, a very forgiving mm-hmm. view of the civil war. And he doesn't romanticize it. He's very anti the romanticizing of the civil war that goes on in this town. I actually, I have my theories on how you could have made Ethan's character more interesting, but we'll get there. I would love to say it's in the book, but it's probably not. Can can I can I just quickly interject and say at this point in the movie, technically you should be hearing a woman's voice in his head. And that woman's okay. voice would be Lena. We Lena Duque. They have this thing called Kelting. So they like communicate with one another, but he doesn't know it's her until he okay. like sees her at school. I think the dream thing is like the their kind of allusion to that, but I guess they, I don't know, didn't want to have them psychically connected for yeah. whatever yeah. reason. Kelting I, sounds I like a weird sex thing that like college kids do. Not like a kink, <laughs> but like a thing where they're like, we're not fully having it reminds sex. Me, it reminds me of the Mormon thing, like the legend oh, of like, soaking. they lay on top of each other. Yeah, and then and like someone move. from underneath like kicks the bed. So like, yeah. they're I not moving, they... they're being moved. We are, <laughs> we are, I did not a ex- jury duty thing. <laughs> Why are we talking about Mormons again? <laughs> well, <laughs> Supernatural uh, History Month is Mormon History Month. Wait, can I just say on the subject of Ethan's like relative liberalism, I would maybe buy it more if one of the, you know, he's got his like maps of all the books if there wasn't front and center copy of Ayn Rand's Fountainhead just like right there. Oh my God, is it? That's so funny. Is it, I, I, I like wrote down some of the books because I like saw that and I was like, oh. Okay. I mean, his mom's books were on the Southern plantations. I don't know how liberal. I mean, he's they the movie is painting words. us to read him as liberal, but yeah. I mean, in the book, she she's supposedly a Civil War historian, mm. but she's actually something else. So. Oh, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He he talks about how you're either I should know this because it's like the iconic quote of like you're either too dumb to leave or too stuck to stuck leave. To, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it doesn't, and, <laughs> this don't matter. Uh, so he he wants to get out, uh, and he finds at the Greenbrier he finds this amulet, uh, or like a locket. It has mm-hmm. the picture of Ann, orphan Annie's parents in it. Uh, it's, it doesn't have a 
photo? It's a, a locket from 1863 that's just, or 53, I guess, it's just sitting out on the ground, you know. Yeah, didn't have to dig think, it up. Are we are supposed to think that Seraphine planted it there? Like, is that I, what it's implying? I mean, I assumed magic. Someone planted it there. That's what I'm assuming. Because how else, like, unless it's just like Legend of Zelda and you, he, like, someone broke a pot. And like a relic came out, you know, <laughs> spin kick and it shows up. Yeah. But yeah. you know how you just find some like Tabellum heirlooms on and the also, ground. In the well, town. you're from South Carolina. Isn't yeah, that happening to you all the time? Happens. Oh, I've got like a drawer full of empty <laughs> clockets. I can't <laughs> stop finding these things. And they're just in mint condition, too. <laughs> Flawless. Yeah. No, I didn't have to polish any of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So his dad is too depressed to be in this movie because his mom died. <laughs> and Ethan brutal. really does not give a shit. Which is crazy. This, this is, I think, one of the moral failings of this movie is that all the stuff with his parents is completely stripped away. And so Ethan is no longer as sympathetic as he was. Like, there's a lot of good stuff about, like, his dad and his mom that was like, oh, wow, we really feel for him. And that's how him and Lena connect. But nope. Yeah, he just he's just like, Dad, there's eggs, but it's like, well, if your dad's never shows up, room, like, are you gonna bring him the eggs? Like, does he just is he alive? Is the dad alive? No, no, yeah, uh, <laughs> no. This I, is the no, the dad doesn't exist. I think he thinks that he exists, but he actually just lives there by himself, and Ama just comes and brings him food. Yeah, Ama, <laughs> yeah. So that's the next thing is Ama comes in, Viola Davis. She brings food. She checks in on him. She's kind of filling Academy in. Academy Award nominee. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and uh, then he goes, he's going to school and he gets a ride from his friend, Link, or Link, you know, Lincoln. And he has a Holy Roller mom. Uh, and that That's she. so funny that you said Holy Roller because in the moon of the book, Link has a band at the beginning called who shot lincoln but apparently they're terrible i was like that's a great name that is a great band um, name, yeah but at the end his band's name is holy rollers that's so crazy that oh my gosh that. it's like so, you also read the book <laughs> she's i did not uh she he's like you pick you, up the important parts yeah she's like he's like oh i don't know what what about loving jesus makes her so crazy like she basically did led my dad to die emma thompson not at first right and so she shows yeah. up later, and I'm like, where the fuck did Emma Thompson come from? Well, it's a weird shot of the two of them <laughs> kneeling at, like, a coffee table, like, through the front door. That's like Carrie and her mom in the Carrie movie. <laughs> yeah, she is, and because he's like, you're going to kiss your mom. She's like a Westboro Baptist church. She like, is. is yeah. The, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I get. I have so much, so many things to talk about in in like the Christianity aspect, mm -hmm. but we'll. I feel like we'll get there. I feel like we need to go over more of the characters before I can delve into that. Uh, mm -hmm. So they go to school. We meet Emily and Mimi. They're the mean girls. But okay, at first I kind of felt for Emily because she's basically like, "You ghosted me over the summer. Like I gave you space. You didn't reach out once." And he's basically like, "Yeah." Yeah. And then she's like, we should go get a movie. And like, I know we're supposed to be like, isn't she such a bitch? Like, he really has to deal with this. But it's like, just say, I don't want to be with you. It would have been so much easier if it was just like in the book, how she just fucking hated him because they had a terrible time at prom. And she was like, I hate you. Oh, and yeah, that makes way more sense. she just bullied him for the rest of the movie. They like... Yeah. I kind of like the change in the I kind of like the change yeah because then you're kind of like it feels like more mode like she's you know like she's more her feelings are hurt and then that kind of puts her on this path to act like you know psychotic and like really bully that's, Lena instead of her just being true. like pretty one-dimensional like a, you know I I, I kind of like that I also found despite her accent being I mean, some chicken fried nonsense. I, I did find Zoe Dutch like pretty charming in that scene. And somehow that she manages to deliver in a like way that I could buy the line, I've been a good girl. I didn't even call you over summer or nothing, like, or whatever it is. Yeah. It, it's like, just, you're kind of like, she, you feel, you feel bad. Like he's being a fuckboy to her, basically. Yeah. Also, she's so inconsequential in this movie where in the book, 
she bullies them nonstop. Like the bullying is crazy in this book. The scene that we'll get to later where like Lena's being cast out of school is like later in the book after session of session of session of being bullied and like she gets carried like oh, stuff wow. dropped on her head at a winter formal like Lena does and by these girls. And so it's like, this is so inconsequential. This movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's and like her in the movie. Yeah. And I just, yeah, I felt, I kind of felt bad for her. Um, I mean, then I was like, she does suck, but like you still just. Yeah. Cause why does he want to get out of Gatlin? We don't really know. And, and also yeah, he very, dated her. He's very like haughty. He's very like, I'm better than these people basically. And he's, yeah. He's yeah. Like that in the book, but like these people are like racist, terrible assholes in the book. And he's not, I guess. But in the movie, it's just like, yeah, he's kind of a fuck boy. So they're gossiping about the Ravenwoods, which is coincidentally the last name. Old of Man Ravenwood. Old Man Ravenwood. That's actually so like in, Di- in Disneyland Paris, their version of the Haunted Mansion has like lore, has like a whole storyline. And it's about like the Ravenwoods, the Ravenwoods. So yeah. These Ravenwoods. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Beach uh, Disney's these... beautiful creatures. <laughs> uh, and so they're gossip. They're like oh, that weird girl, and then she shows up, and they're like, "You're a Satanist." They say your family prays to the devil, and you're a witch. And she's like, "I've dealt with the bitch disease before," or something like that. And yeah, the bitch virus. They're like, "Oh wow, ownage." How does Mimi feel about all the Confederate reenactments she has to do for school? But that's a great question because I, yeah, I don't remember if they mentioned the race of the student specifically, but um, there's actually two women of color and they're both combined to make Ama in this movie. Um, but yeah, that's a great question for Mimi. Poor Mimi. Uh, it's like poor Bonnie in Vampire Diaries, uh, yeah. which we'll yeah. talk about later. Uh, so we're welcome to our first lore session. Our first lore. Love it. Did you know everyone talks about Salem and those those kind of shitty witch museums? But uh, did you know that uh, there's a witch hunt in South Carolina in 1792, 213 years before the release of Chicken Little? Uh, in in Winsboro, South Carolina, there's people and mainly cattle were getting sick. And so blame was being tossed around. They're like accusing four women of being witches. The main one being an old woman named Mary Engelman. They said she could magically like womp cattle and like psychically like lift them up and smack them down. She was just, she was WWE cattle <laughs> with magic. Uh, they said allegedly. She could, allegedly. They said she could shape shift into like a panther. And she turned a boy, like a teen boy, into a horse and rode him to the devil's Sabbath. So the four women were tried in an illegal trial in a barn house where one man was the judge and jury. Uh, they were burned and beaten and attacked, but they survived. And many more p- times, people tried to kill Mary, but she was a bad bitch and you couldn't kill her. Uh-huh. Uh, she died of old age, but Good they say she haunts the Winsboro courthouse. As she fact. should, yeah. if she does. My gosh. Wow. Yeah. That's a good one. Because yeah. I was like, is there a history of witchcraft in the South? And I actually couldn't find much. But we'll talk about some other things that are similar. But well, that's interesting. there's, I mean, do you have Lavinia Fisher on your list? Because that's kind no. of like, oh, okay. That is the first female serial killer in the united states not to brag but she is a charleston south carolina native girl Um, boss girl slay girl boss so so, (laughs) it's an interesting one because she you know in um in charleston there's the charleston old city jail which is like the most haunted you know building in south carolina it was um jail Then it was converted into a prisoner of war camp during the Civil War. Then it was turned into an insane asylum where I think it was one of the, um, God, maybe a Roosevelt president sent some relation who was, you know, but Lavinia Fisher was, and this was prior to the Civil War, she and her husband owned an inn just outside of Charleston. So it was a pretty common um, 
place to stop for travelers. And what she would do is she would drug the people who came through and then, you know, they would go up to their room, they would pass out, they had like a, you know, kind of like trap door or whatever to get into the room. They would, you know, kill them and steal their stuff. So um, one of these guys, I guess, uh, just, you know, went to stay at the end, kind of got like a bad vibe from Lavinia, didn't, you know, have anything with dinner and then stayed up all night waiting. And then, you know, she comes in with the knife. He jumps out the window, crawls, you know, runs the rest of the way to town and, and, and informs on her. And she gets arrested. Now, she was put in because they didn't really have a women's prison at the time. She was put in the old Charleston County Jail and was like the only woman there. So you can imagine that among those prisoners, she was not treated particularly well. People would come outside the jail and like throw things through the window. I mean, they just hated her. Um, So when she finally was hung, and I mean, it took them forever to prosecute her murder because they just weren't used to having a woman criminal so they couldn't decide if it was like if they could pursue the death penalty even though they dug up this grave like all of her victims and everything they could not decide whether or not to pursue the death penalty because it felt like it was untoward to hang a woman eventually decided to and her last words um before she was hung was uh if you have a message for the devil give it to me because i'm on my way wow pretty Girl slay. Slay. You say so myself. Slay, but her yeah. ghost is in the old Kenny jail and apparently just is a, um, a lot meaner to, to men than to women, uh, they believe, uh, on account of, you know, sort of her, her treatment in the prison. Um, yeah. So that's my that's my South Carolina ghost story. Yeah. I feel like her and Mary Engelman have beef because yeah. like she's like, oh, my gosh, all this happened to me. And Mary Engelman's like, well, you murdered people. All I did was like be an old woman when cows got sick nearby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I just knew about essential oils. Uh, <laughs> back to the movie where they're in history class, right? And he's like, on December 21st, the winter solstice, right? That's winter solstice. And it's, uh, we got to do a Confederate reenactment of our Confederate victory, the Battle of Honey Hill. Uh, and you're going to be graded on it. And so we're going to talk yep. about lost cause ideology, <laughs> but we not now. We're, we'll get there. We have some things to build uh-huh. as we get there. And uh, so, yeah, she's an outsider. I guess so is Ethan. But uh, later it's raining and she's stuck in the rain and he's about to run her over with his car. And then he's like, hey, do you need a ride? And he spoils the Titanic and they get in the car and they're like, she's like, what are you a prom king and then they're talking about books and Bukowski and yeah she's really mean in the movie and very like how do I put this there's no charm to her whereas like yeah in the in the book she's very guarded but she softens very quickly to Ethan and they have a lot in common they talk a lot because they're also talking in their heads um but yeah she's just like really rude to everybody yeah yeah she mentions having lived in every state that seceded from the union uh (laughs) and i'm like you know what if i was a caster i was gonna say if i was a witch but sorry to use a slur if i was a caster exactly uh (laughs) why wouldn't i just move to like boston california if she wasn't with her mom and she wasn't with her uncle because he's just been at a green briar sitting in a house right yeah. yeah like so then who she was just like with her cousin just roaming around from state to state is that just the two underage i think she was with aunt dell ridley and then i guess it would be larkin and then there was also two the other sisters in the book uh, i don't know if the grandma was oh yeah she actually was with her grandma for a while in the book but yeah it's not clear in the movie it does make it seem like just like Ethan, they're just minors yeah. on their own. Yeah. It's and also like both of their characterization is that they're like both manic pixies. Do you know? Yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like she's he's just like, a goth I'm the charming pixie. one. I can't 
stop babbling and she's like I'm not like other girls because I'm standoffish and t-. like they're both yes. they both are giving I'm not like other girls <laughs> <laughs> yeah I want to hear Alden Ehrenreich say I'm not like other girls but in his bad southern accent so this is where okay th- this is my time to drop my my character what I would do for for Ethan Ethan should be Christian mm, interesting if, okay if we're trying to do like most good romances there's things in common but they're also have an opposite effect they're not both the same thing right you know so beauty and the beast right like it's not beauty and the beauty it's you know it's like two different things so if she's like a witch and he's like maybe he's not like a racist bigot but he's naive and sheltered and like involved in his like church community Mm -hmm. but like he's of that kind of like just kind of like i'm nice to everyone you know like that kind of like so then there's something for him to have a conflict about, right? Because he's like, I don't know how I feel about this magic, right? And yeah, right. there's like a reason for him to be of the community. Because if they're both outsiders, I feel like that's less of a like interesting romance. Whereas like if someone's on the outside always looking in, like Dear and Dear Evan Hansen, and then one person's on the inside, you know, like there's there's more of a conflict there. Like an interpersonal conflict in like how they view life, you know, and he could lose his religion. He could expand his worldview on religion. Like, I'm not saying like it needs to be a story about religion, but like to have him be more of the town, but have something small that makes him different. Like he's just a little more kind and open minded would both make him more sympathetic because he doesn't hate everyone around him and be make more make more conflict, you know. In the book, he is very little of an outsider because he he's on the basketball team. He does not read in front of people. That's like his secret. Uh, like he's actually a, not a nerd, but he likes reading books, especially like banned books. Mm-hmm. And like he loves reading, but he's playing the jock role. Yeah, which we barely in. get in this movie. It's not there. <laughs> My head's in the um, game hearts and the song is not. But he, a big part of him becoming an outsider like literally an outsider in the book is that he sides with Lena when she's getting bullied. Like they're together. Yeah. Like, first they're friends and they, they, they become a couple. And so he sticks by her and then he becomes an outsider because of that. And that's interesting. Right. Yes. So yeah. you saying that he was a Christian is also really interesting. Cause I mean, so this movie is making it into a Romeo and Juliet story when there's not really a Romeo and Juliet story in the book. Yeah, because spoilers in the book, he doesn't forget anything. So no, that's like a last ditch this effort is, to have some. They yeah. they try the to book. like separate them in ways that like Romeo and Juliet would need to be separated in that sort of you know archetypal yeah. story, but that doesn't exist in the book. Like I think yeah, it's a tragic romance because like she can't control what's happening to her, and they're both just trying to figure it out. But that's not what this movie is really about. It's 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 also weird in the I mean not well, I mean two things one it's insane that they keep calling him a jock when he's like five eight um <laughs> like I could not also, get over that not, I don't just, look at that boy and go like jock no yeah also he runs and it doesn't even seem like he's running on a team he's just running no yeah it's uh, I just I just yeah I think if he was if it was more of a like he is like choosing because of his morals to stand by her and then that would make people hate him even more because then he's calling them out and like there i think there's just so many interesting things you could do with that but it's like especially in this era i feel like there's a lot of media critiquing christianity but it didn't know how to there's and there's so much good storytelling there but they didn't really know how to do it in a way that was like interesting or meaningful because a lot of these people had very minimal experiences. Like when you think of like, we talked about when we had Glee Boot, we talked about this a lot. You know, it's like, this wasn't like mining their own trauma or if it was, it was so diluted. It was just like, oh, these are like those other weird people. And it's like, we're set, Christianity is so baked into our culture that there's a lot of interesting things when you start to deconstruct that you know, and, like, how a character might deal with that, and I feel like 
it was like maybe it's a coastal elite thing i don't know it's like people just didn't know how to write it in a way that was like an interesting it's cartoonish thing. yeah it, yeah it is truly like it's so one-dimensional it's so cartoonish it's it's missing out on i mean what i think of is like a key part of you know some of this especially when you're talking about kind of more like upper crust southern culture where it's like it's incredibly insidious it's like the yeah. bless your heart and the like you know it's like how these people play so polite to your face but like the second you know you're gone from the room how like really like deeply how these convictions are I, I also think part of the you know this like cartoonishness of it is that there's no escalation it's just she walks in and immediately it's like you're Satanist, you're the devil. It's not like it's this thing of like, oh, Seraphine is whipping people up and like, you know, playing on their worst mm -hmm. instincts. Like Lena walks in and they already immediately are just like, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's a yeah. good point because in in the book, they do take a while to really like get to that point. And it takes a while for them to have that big trial about Lena, which yeah. Lena is present for in the book. No. And it's very intense. But you get a lot of this. Well, my mama said this. My mama said that yeah. in the book. And so you can tell that Seraphine is really digging into these people. That's not clear yeah. until that scene in this in this movie. I think because some people I have mean, never been like Southern Crucible. Like, yeah, because also yeah. Emma Thompson is not Zoe Deutsch's mom. Yeah, uh, Emma Thompson is Link's mom. And so and they do so little. Zoe Deutsch that. never talks to Emma Thompson's character. Yeah. So it's like, why would Zoe Deutsch's character be doing this if Seraphine wasn't like digging in? Like, that's kind of the whole point of Seraphine's thing is like, I'm tricking Lena into thinking that all mortals are just terrible, even though these yeah. people might actually be terrible. Yeah. No, I at first thought Emma Thompson was Emily's mom. I did too. When I first it makes saw her, sense. Like, oh, that's Emily's mom. We haven't seen her. Oh no, she's Link's mom. Oh, that was the lady that he was kneeling with. Cool. Didn't see that at all. It's just it's like they keep it at such a distance that it remains cartoonish, and I think like it also ignores like how that integrates into a community because yeah. I think so yeah. many people have never been a part of any kind of community, let alone a religious one, an immigrant one, any ethnic. You know, like it's just this very limited thing, and it's like well how people use social power and religious power how like that wasn't they're talking about oh, these yeah. women haven't been touched by their husbands it's like well religion is a way for a lot of women in these like patriarchal societies to exert some kind of influence and that's why i right. think the book has a lot of these really interesting ideas that are weirdly play out but it's like never touched in like the daughters of the american revolution is huge in the book and it's literally about social power of these women who are like banning books and doing all this yeah stuff. and it's like moms for liberty yeah it's, yes and it's yeah. actually so if they remade this now there would be di direct links between yeah. um yeah the moms for liberty stuff and what would be going on if they were a little bit more faithful to the book in those themes like and they yeah. were really interesting being played with yeah uh, so they're doing at one point they're doing exorcisms because there's like a storm happening and this is where Emily breaks up with him and gives I keep on calling him Ansel Elgort uh, what's his face Ethan yeah. uh, gives him the Ethan Everett White <laughs> yeah gives him like the exact lines he gave to her when he said I need space and I'm you know if I said this about the serial killer I'll say girl slay to her too you know like, that was a pretty good comeback because then in class they're like let's pray because we can't read these banned books and we can't uh like be around a satanist with us good christians and then the teacher is like you can't pray in class and the, but the teacher does so little she's the just teacher, like let's she, she's like, no stop <laughs> Stop that. Stop the violence. <laughs> and uh, she pulls a carry, is what I wrote. Lena pulls a carry and she yeah. uh, breaks the window and glass. And everyone is like gashed. Like Zoe De Deutsch is like bleeding. Which is funny. In the book, no one gets hurt except for Lena. Lena's the only person who gets hurt. That's interesting. Yeah. And so now he's going to Lena's house to check on her. He just walks into the house at one point. The door opens for him. And then he just walks in and I was like, that is no true Southern boy. He would have been like, hello, excuse me. 
And I'm like, what are you doing? You're just walking. Yeah. Just because the door opens doesn't mean you can come in. Maybe there's a draft. <laughs> and uh, he he finds her on the grounds, and then they're talking about books, and he's checking in on her, and she's like, you don't know when to quit. You know, you're so charming. And he's all like talking I don't know, yeah, like... I, um, <laughs> that kind of sounds like goofy to me <laughs> yeah I, sorry to this man but uh, this man. yeah so a really quick thing about the lore in the book is that ravenwood manor is one mm. area and then greenbrier is actually was is an old um burnt down plantation that was just next to ravenwood so they're two ah. separate areas and that is important because of lore that is never explained in the movie but i guess it's not really important in the movie because they assassinate that character or that character's character they assassinate uh so it's like two separate spaces but they're next to each other and that greenbrier area was originally the duquesne property oh okay uh, so ravenwood and duquesne had come together but that was the duquesne property back in the day okay now so which... when you see the vision and that house it's burning that's down, greenbrier greenbrier burning down because i was gonna say which is the one blake lively and ryan reynolds got married at yeah that would be greenbrier yeah okay yeah um uh so and then it burned down then it burned down yeah <laughs> So then they he Macon is like, you got to invite him in for tea. And they come in and cause he's like, oh, he's leaving. And then he's playing the piano and cause he's like, oh, will you play the piano? And she's like, this isn't a Jane Austen novel. And then can you get the tea? He says, wrong century. I'm like, so you she's... brought him in and there's no no food? She? Okay, first of all. We were just talking I... about this, Kayla, and Southern culture. I... <laughs> no it is yeah it's the thing of like you have to keep asking like you it's this like ritual you know of like and i think it's also like a midwestern thing too but this ritual of like do you want any water no are you sure you don't want anything to drink no are you sure i can't get any drink okay yeah like you have to go through this thing of like refusing twice before you can say yes <laughs> it's uh, just like this weird little play that we put on for each other i love that i love the arts <laughs> um so she's so mean to Macon and you would think that she just is this rude little girl living with her uncle in the book their relationship very nice you know a little strained because he's obviously keeping secrets and she doesn't like that but you know she loves him he's her mm -hmm. uncle they have a, a pleasant relationship and this is just like bastardizing that and I was like why are you doing this why yeah because your ending is just going to be not good. You True. Make yeah. them have a good just relationship. A stern, yeah, he's just like stern figure that just says no, don't talk to that boy or anyone. Um, it also, can we get into the his like the differences between him in the book and the and the not? I mean, aside sure. from the characterization, like they just don't. And again, I know we we talked about it, but with like that there are different, I mean, for lack of a better word, I'll call them you know, breeds or types of like mm -hmm. casters that, you know, you kind of get it with the most with uh, Emmy Rossum's character, but like with yeah. Ridley, yeah. but like you don't with him at all. It's until, also weird. Until he shows up in the book, he shows up in Ethan's bedroom. He's like, yeah, I'm an incubus. I eat people's dreams. So that was weird in the book. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. An incubus in your bedroom. In they be collect. <laughs> they they be collecting your sperm to make babies, which which is later. Not We've talked about incubuses. <laughs> Not that kind of incubus. Uh, but yeah. Well, it's because I think they instead of an incubus, they're like, oh, he's a dark caster, but he's pretending to be light for Lena. Well, again, like the incubus is a type of caster, but I don't think he was. I don't know if he was technically a dark caster in the book. I thought that he wasn't. I thought, I thought that he, he was. was yeah it was just his type yeah i thought his twin incubus brother named hunting was the dark one um right. yeah so that's why i was really confused yeah and he has this power in the movie to basically get ethan to 
saying his future? A, a version of his future. He's going to marry Emily Asher and have kids because he's not going to go away to college because he's going to stay close for his dad. I'm like, so his dad's He's going to become an alcoholic. And, and then he's going to hang himself when he's and in he's his gonna lose. Yeah, after heart attacks, after DUI. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty horrific. And after a little bit of attention, Macon just kind of accepts that Ethan's going to be around. And they actually end up having yeah. a pretty close relationship, all things considered. I mean, one of the worst things you can tell a teenager is no. I'm not no. saying never say no to a teenager, but it's like, yeah, there are times where it's like certain things by saying this is forbidden, you will, you have, you've just found their new hyperfixation. Like you've yeah. found their new obsession. Yeah. Uh, I've seen the little mermaid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so then like, as they're leaving, he's like, Oh wait, I need to give you this amulet I found by in the grass. Uh, this, and th that's the only way to woo a woman is after you've found one of the many uh, <laughs> Civil War era amulets I, I lying it's on like, the ground is to present it to your mate. That's called that's South Carolina culture. It's like penguins. Yeah. yeah. In the book, okay. Lena and him find it at the same time. Oh. They're like hanging out at Greenbrier. And that's when the first vision happens. And in the book, the visions are obviously more fleshed out. They are, they are literally transported back in time almost. Uh -huh. They are feeling it, seeing it, smelling it, and they are hearing all the dialogue. And there's a lot of dialogue between Genevieve and Ethan. And then also this woman, uh, I believe she was probably like the servant in the house, to put it lately. Uh, Yikes! They do not... Say slave. Oh, oh no no. So no no. She no. was she was probably their slave or one of their slaves, but she was the house servant yeah. slave who is actually Alma's ancestor. And mm -hmm. she it's these three are the characters in that flashback that happens many times over the book and then comes to fruition. So the way they do it in this movie is if such, they both touch it, yeah. Such they get a like bastardization. A, it's just like, oh, whoa, that's yeah. crazy. You're not yeah, getting like a, any of the depth. Well, I, I feel like it's like a recurring issue with this, with all of the magic stuff, where it's like every time it feels like the director is just kind of going like, oh, what would be cool? And like, yeah. is every, and every time, like the movie, th it's just like every single time they're sacrificing clarity for something like that is supposedly visually interesting, but I... Yeah, like uh, it, the special effects are, you know, just like goofy. I don't think that they were good at the time, and they're certainly not good now. So it's just you, yeah. you worst of both worlds. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah they, it's just like a flash, and then he passes out, and he wakes up uh, in his place. He's like, "How did I get here?" Uh, and I was like, Is "You that better still not around." So then, aren't you like you? They dropped you off. You better leave that amulet back in Greenbrier where you found it. He's like, "I didn't say I've been to Greenbrier." She's like, "So." Now Amma is kind of, we're getting clued in that she knows something about what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, before we, I just also want to, she's really giving the buccal fat removal look in this poster for Beautiful Creatures. <laughs> yeah, she, like the contouring is insane. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll say it though, I liked her. She's Australian. I was very impressed with her, her and given, given all that. No, I was not. <laughs> I think I hated every performance in this movie except for Emma Thompson because it was so campy. And, oh, we have to get and Emmy Rossum. Thompson. Yeah. Emmy. Oh, Emmy. Yeah. A fan of the opera is Emmy Rossum. All right. Macon goes to see Ama to in be like swamp in the swamp. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's like, you're a seer. You got to tell me stuff. He's like demanding. He's so fidgety. And like, I actually thought Jeremy Irons was going to be a really good casting for Macon. He was going to bring this, bring the cool poise that Macon has in the book. And he's so spastic. And I was like, this is not the Jeremy Irons that I know he can be. Yeah. So strange. But anyway. Yeah. He was being very just, yeah. just demanding of her. And she's like, I don't know why I deal with you. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't know why I deal yeah. with this white nonsense. Uh, and so then, <laughs> She's doing, she's going to ask her ancestors and she's offering like their favorite food and like the stuff that they liked. And he's like, no wonder they died of a heart attack. 
Yeah. It was like not my making. Making in the book would never. <laughs> it that is also just like such respect. a yeah like they are like friends and like respected like colleagues more in, in the in the book I it's also like and this is like a I find a problem in the book and the movie is just like Ama isn't a caster she has like seer ancestor magic and like in her role is like kind of like a mentor slash like nanny figure to um Ethan it is like it is the like magical like black magical person, like, Negro. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, I, yeah. yeah I don't I didn't want to say that but like it's I, that we were referring it, to the it, specific trope the oh, trope yeah. not that yeah. I know <laughs> yeah but it is just like it's so yeah it's, and it's made worse in the movie because in the book it's also like that but I feel like it's a bit uh I guess sacrilegious is the best word I can come up with because Amma yeah. is very, she's a devout Christian and she is also a seer and I'm guessing it's some sort of voodoo, but on the other hand, this Amma character is also making up this woman called Marion who runs the Lunar Libri and to put them into one character feels very sacrilegious to Amma because she's very much like I'm not in your world yeah. I'm in my own world and I happen to help um, you because basically I gotta clean up your shit yeah so the fact that they combined her into one character I get why they did it to simplify but it does feel a bit sacrilegious because she she also takes care of Ethan like gets him food and stuff and that ties Anna a bit was... to the mammy stereotype yes uh, yeah Ama was their housekeeper and like partially lived with him partially did not and was like his mom like his second mom and then his mom yeah. passed and so like was basically his only parent because his dad was stuck up in his room so like yeah. the relationship there's no relationship with Ama here and that like again it's just like a complete disservice to her character mm -hmm. like the good that it had in the book speak you mentioned voodoo so voodoo is one of the many names for Afro-Haitian religion and its practices. Uh, so via the French and Spanish presence in places like Florida and New Orleans, that kind of it's in the background of uh, Southern culture. Uh, it's integrated. It's a synchronization of African religions of enslaved people with Catholicism and saint imagery. Uh, and so it's a monotheistic religion, but it has uh, Loa uh, is one way I've seen it, I've seen it pronounced, uh, who are spirits who serve like the greater supreme being, the creator God. And so some of these are like Papa Legba, who he presides over crossroads and goodness, he holds spiritual knowledge. So he's associated with St. Peter, and who has the keys and you sacrifice to him meat and potatoes and like hearty things. And so you would leave offerings on altars to these beings and you would have these kind of these rituals that were like possession is a word that's used, but it's not like a negative thing. It's like the spirit inhabits you and it's like a a religious experience where you're one, you know, you're inhabited by this this being. Uh, so Erzali was another popular one. She was associated with love, beauty, creativity, passion, sorrow, femininity, discord, this kind of like similar to a lot of love goddesses that we've talked about uh, associated with the Virgin Mary and like the broken heart. Uh, and so you'd offer her like jewelry, sugary drinks, like pink champagne, flowers, silk, and she would get overwhelmed by the world and like weep with sorrow. So this this kind of offering to have that communication, right, that with the spirits is something that is in this actual religion. Uh, and I think there was like, it's like they're nodding to that in this movie for sure. But I think they're also, mm -hmm. there's a distance. Yeah. I, I don't know if all like you guys have talked or familiar with like Gullah culture, but like that is something that is specific to like North Carolina, South Carolina, a little bit of Georgia, but like mostly South Carolina. And that is like a specific um, like black subculture that came from the like mass immigration from a bunch of different like African nations as well as the integration of like uh like creole french and it's essentially i mean i don't think i would have to look it up but like it's a very small number of people that speak it and i think if these books were to be written with any nod 
towards the specificity of South Carolina of that setting if these be essentially if these books were written by people from here it's like I think that Ama would have probably been like a Gullah descendant because that is again like a very specific um subculture in 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 the south and that that, and that adds, specifically that adds a lot of depth too and like specificity that this is missing in the favor of like very generic yeah. southern gothic yeah i think in the book some of the spells in the book of moons or some of the the materials that they review are written in that language but i don't know if Amma was specifically a part of that community so yeah that's interesting I mean because I don't think that it's uh, like written specifically like one way or another right. but it's sort of like I would think like I don't know eh, that would be like a South Carolina specific thing where like some of the you know like you know a lot more of like you know Haitian Creole like hoodoo type you know people mm -hmm. settled in like Louisiana so it's just like if you were to distinguish between like those locations like that and that would be like a pretty you know relevant it's also it was this the the religion took the form it did because of Louis the 14th the sun king we talked about him because Charles Perrault uh, the guy who gave every fairy tale character the most iconic accessory worked for him but in a less whimsical thing uh, Louis the 14th had a slave code um, which is pretty dire to read. And then especially when you realize that it was like worse before he had the codes, you're like, oh, fuck. So Yikes. they they people had to make their slaves Roman Catholic. And that was like how they justified the slavery because like, oh, you're bringing them to God. So slaves would enslaved people would combine their spiritual traditions with Catholicism to like get a pass. And to be fair, the slave owners weren't interested in really explaining their religion to these people because they didn't want them to celebrate saints days and not work they didn't want them to be like oh we have to honor this saint so we're not going to work or they they didn't want them to have community where they'd be congregating and they didn't want them to learn biblical stories that would encourage them to rise up like you know moses leading the slaves out of egypt you know like they were trying to like hide them they're like can forth forcibly converting them but they didn't really want them to be part of the religion and like have a feeling of humanity from the religion so we have this interesting combination of spiritual practices which this movie does very little with uh but i did that that offering thing clicked something and i was like okay this is this is interesting uh meanwhile with the horny teenagers in this movie uh he's going to her house again and there's some magic trap and he's like walking in circles and getting gopped up by black goop and she has to save it reminded him. me of um brothers grim oh the <laughs> i taste good. good shout out to episode yeah. one yeah uh and she saves him and takes him up to her room and explains that she's a caster not with, a witch not a witch that is a slur yeah. Or like an oversimplification. They're immortal beings. And some of them are dark. Some of them are light. They don't have anything to do with the devil. Um, they talk about mortals are so small minded. They created the devil. And I'm like, I feel like they did after interacting with one of you. I don't. This is my personal lore. Right? Why do people keep making creatures immortal that don't need to be immortal? I don't it's, know. It, 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 it's so much harder to write. Well, are they actually immortal they refer to people as mortal as mortal yeah but and they're like but they're, i think that just is supposed to be like people who have no, have no powers because yeah i don't also, think they're immortal. A thing that's relevant uh, that, that's a huge change from like the books to the movies is that like they can't engage with each other physically in the books like if they oh he gets like a point, shock. i forget yeah. which yeah at one point he almost has a heart attack they yeah. make out yes so like so like that's a big reason why they can't be together it's not like that they uh like the casters will outlive them necessarily it's like they are physically incompatible yeah. there, and hannah does it in the books do they get to in book one that he's a wayward no mm -mm. Uh, yet another example of his not like other girls um <laughs> he is not a normal mortal he's a wayward which are just like people who exist to help casters, I guess, find their way. Love that. 
Wow. So like at one point they're in a maze and he's just like really good at navigating it. That's like one of the more literal examples. I'm really good at mazes. Wow. Well, in the book, he's they uh well he can he talks with his mom's ghost and um there's like a a, a spelling puzzle. So that makes a lot of sense the way we're because in the book he does really help Lena figure this out. Like that's kind of his goal. But no, that's interesting. This movie does not make it clear that like they're just like oh yeah you guys just can't be together for your worlds are just too different. It's literally like you physically cannot be together because well, they, you could die. And it's it's almost like they almost have something. Inter- I kind of I like that they can touch in this movie because like I, I just you know it's yeah. a romance. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. And and, and they try they like get at something that's almost interesting, which is like the reason that this like boy is a danger to you is because like if seraphine does that like it increases your likelihood that to protect him you will cross a line and that's like what the like subtext of all of this is supposed to be but like or not even like the subtext (laughs) it's what the text of the the movie is like is getting at but it just doesn't really like man like it just because Macon is being so, and her entire family are being so cagey about it, and like it just doesn't make any sense. Mm-mm. It is. I just, I think that I have this thing with the power fantasy of supernatural romance that I, I never really noticed, but I'm really feeling is that like there's very much a power fantasy to these casters and how they're so much better than everyone else. And the movie does very little to disprove that, right? Like, all the mortals are, like, scummy, except for Ethan. He's special. And it's, like, especially because they're marketed towards young people, I really dislike that message of, like, everyone's scum, but you're special. And special people have the ability to fuck with everyone else. And it's just, like, we saw that in Twilight. We're seeing that here. I want to track that through this month. Um, Mm -hmm. I hate it. Speaking of things I hate, let's talk about Mrs. Lincoln's little assembly. Uh... Oh so boy. which at is the, at the church. In this is before the midpoint, right? I want to say we're at 10 the midpoint. Since I have read the <laughs> I just <laughs> because I because f- it is a big reveal at the end that Mrs. Lincoln is actually being possessed. Uh yeah, here it's like a pretty quick uh we we meet Mrs. Yeah. Lincoln. She's like she needs to it's thing we think of the clip from uh Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Take him to the principal's <laughs> office where you will be expelled. Uh, Can't wait and, to do that movie. <laughs> and it's just like, she's bad and she's a Satanist. And she's homophobic. We hate know. Satanists and homosexuals and Greenpeace. Mm-hmm. And I thought... Democrats, like, socialists. Democrats, Democrats so socialists. So, yeah. I was it's, like... Again, this is what the one dimensionality of this is just like... Um, and it... Yeah. Yeah. It's just because also it's like this, either the pastor's there and all this, and I know religion and the public sector are more integrated in some of these areas, but I'm like, I don't think you can, I guess because the glass, you can't expel someone from a public school in the United States of America for magic. Okay, so... (laughs) I'm saying that with a question mark because I feel like that's insane. I'm like, I'm sure it's happening. I don't know. In the book, it is equally insane because there are a series of events that Lena ends up being involved in where like students are put in danger, right? So the um, the window's blowing out, there's uh, something else. And then at the um, at the prom where she gets carried with, you know, it's not mm-hmm. pig's blood, but it's, you know, she gets ruined. And it's actually Ridley who's there who like blows everything up and Lena gets blamed for stuff that could be blamed on faulty wiring, um, you know, a big wind gust. And so, like, this movie, like, gets to that very quickly. But the lead up to that in the book makes it more realistic that they would be like, okay, we got to kick her out. But, like, it's also just like, these things could not have happened because of this girl. That is insanity. Like, yeah. it's literally like it's literally a witch hunt like, especially and it's so heavy-handed in the book and the movie and it's so annoying and when we talked about witch hunts 
did we not point out that actually in the medieval period they thought those were dumb that it was dumb to <laughs> believe yeah. in witches and it wasn't until a couple like a couple hundred years later they're like mm, but maybe witches, witches are everywhere witches uh, are real. so that is just kind of embarrassing for these people i guess that like a peasant would be like are you stupid um yeah but uh so then he comes in, and speaking of power fantasies, I also decided we will not be discussing Satanism. I was like, is that going to be a lore? And I'm like, not not yeah, today. No. Not today, Satan. Wait. Till, Literally. Wait, wait, yeah. Sorry, Satan. You gotta wait a little longer. <laughs> so he walks in, and he, speaking of coastal elite power fantasies, I don't know. So he's like, I'm wealthy. I own this town. We will not explain what that entails, what icky moral things that was involved. He's like, I could put a sanitarium or a rehab center or all this stuff on the I land. I could bring poor people. He, probably people he could get rid of the, the motel. Also, sorry, they have this amazing cut to the teacher that inexplicably has an eye patch. <laughs> oh, yeah. The teacher that has an eye patch is really funny because they get, <laughs> they combine two characters from the book. And I was like, sure, I don't think that's necessary. You're just bringing attention to something that doesn't need to be brought attention to. <laughs> Nothing gets <laughs> done with that. But what love he says, it. like, He's got that just that moment where he's like, well, your motel, where you tell your wives you're at civil war, but you're not like practice, and then it cuts to like the, the guy with the eye patch. <laughs> yeah. He's so like, my affair. Uh, and so he's like, so I own this town, so she's going to stay in school. But I'm like, he is like, she's a bully, but so is he then. Uh, he's using his wealth. Yeah. And the power of instead of being like, you guys Southern are insane. patriarchy. Instead of bringing up like literally the the law, it's like you cannot expel a kid. Where is for your magic proof? in the book? He's literally like, "Where is the proof?" And he's like, "Well, we have eyewitness accounts." And he's like, "These girls are lying." Clearly, like he's literally like, "This is literally a Goody Proctor situation. We have a crucible situation on our hands." Yeah, uh, and so because so but so he goes off and. Uh, it's then she comes out as Seraphine, right? And they do this walk around, which does remind me of the Witch Museum in Salem as they're walking around this church uh -huh. all dark. Yeah. Uh, and they're... It like stops, tongue... takes them out of time or something. And like, yeah. It's weird. After he has that sick burn about her hat. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. they, he's like, she's like, I, you know, she's going to be claimed by the darkness, by teenage love and heartbreak. And he's like, she's going to be light. They basically just say that for a while and she's going to make a new age of casters, which we I mentioned this to Kayla before we recorded, but caster was the name of a card game I invented as a child where the only rule was that you had to cheat because I was just annoyed that my older siblings were better at games than me because they were literate. Right. And I was like pretty young. And so I just made up this game that was just smacking cards and being like, boom. Uh, and so I this in, this entire movie, that's whenever they're like casters, that's like... <laughs> Yeah, you should have trademarked that when you had the chance. To. Yeah, too bad uh, I didn't yeah. know what copyright I said we should was. turn it into a drinking game. Yeah, <laughs> there's nothing I love more in a movie when two British people are using accents that are different from their natural ones, and they're not good. And I love it. I lo I will say I loved Emma Thompson in this movie. Like as much as she was just like such a like that the problem with that character was like all like started with everything. the writing you know what yeah. I mean? like yeah everything but like I will say she was having fun with it and when she like pulled open like the thingy with the holy water and like dabbed it on her like perfume <laughs> <laughs> and she's like swirling she was having fun and like I yeah yeah she's yeah. being a scenery chewing villain and I, I, you know, we love a sorceress. We love someone who's just like having that fun and she's, she's having fun. And so he's wealthy because he owns the town. And so even though he says something weird, they're like, okay, Lena's going to stay in school. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty lost at this point as an audience member. But uh, speaking of loss, let's talk about the lost cause uh, interpretation of the Confederacy, <laughs> a political institution that is shorter than the uh, length of the TV show Phineas and Ferb. So I did a homeschool curriculum from the South, even though it was Catholic, it was explicitly from Virginia. And so I was actually given a lot of lost cause ideology as a kid. And I didn't really buy it because people were like, it's about states' rights. And I was like, okay, but I was also just like, but like you did have the slaves. 
it's states' but, rights to have slaves. Yeah, I was just kind of like, like, what it is. Let's say that quiet part out loud. So interesting. Like, I went to like a Christian school in the South. I had never heard like this in the book. They call it like the War of Northern Aggression. That was the first time in my life I heard of that. Was from this book. You know what I mean? And so I do. I mean, that's that's very interesting. This like. I think I did get the, at least in my education, the, yes, the completing the sentence of states' rights to do what. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I find it fascinating that you, whatever curriculum you got was the incomplete sentence version. Yeah. And they and teach I was... it in public schools too. So it's also yeah. like, it's not just this random uh, homeschool curriculum. Mm -hmm. It's also like, because I mean that's something that's kind of being fought over in Florida right now. Yeah, and it I just kind of was kind of like why like why would you want to pick the side <laughs> as this I was just kind of like what are we, and I just because I knew the bias and it was so obvious to me even as a kid that I was like well okay um and I also I hated I was Andrew Jackson immediately I was like I can't stand this president that's why when I get twenty dollars I just have to spend it you know the lost cause ideology is basically this concept of like this fairy tale of what the South was like before the war where everyone knew their place and there were Southern gentlemen. Uh, I think Alice calls Jasper one in Twilight. Um, and there's Southern bells and like this kind of like fantasy of the plantation. There's a lot to unpack here. Uh, if you've watched, there's a video on YouTube called Why So Many Confederate Vampires by Princess Weeks, which I did watch. Uh, and it points out this really started with Anne Rice, though in Interview with a Vampire, it's very much using vampires as, you know, they're wealthy, they're elitist, and they leech off of humans who they don't see the value in and how that's such a perfect metaphor for, like, their aristocracy and slave owners. Like, we talked in the Twilight episode how vampires went from, like, your local peasants un being undead, like your neighbor, and to aristocratic, you know, people yeah. who leeched off of society. And we see, you know, Twilight, True Blood, Vampire Diaries. They all have Confederate vampires. Apparently, the Vampire Diaries books, the vampires were in the Italian Renaissance noblemen, but in the TV show, they were uh, Southern Confederates. Interesting. Uh, whereas in True Blood, the Southern aspect was always integral. Yes. Um, and like the Daughters of the American Revolution or, you know, like the, the all the monuments that were built a long time after the war and the relationship people have with the confederate flag which i'm from a yankee state and people would fly that and be like we were on the northern side mm -hmm. it is really weird when you're like driving through like upstate new york or something and <laughs> i'll see that and i'll just be like that's that's not argued i mean it's for no one but arguably it's the least for you like <laughs> yeah. yeah and there's also the concept of southern gothic so that's According to the Britannica, Encyclopedia Britannica, a style of writing practiced by many writers of the American South whose stories were set in that region are characterized by grotesque, macabre, or fantastic incidents. So similar to Gothic novels in Europe, but it pulls from this kind of fantasy of the Southern aristocracy. Um, and they're more, much more old timey feeling than like the Gilded Age or Northern aristocracy, right? So it it's almost like an American way to have these european-esque social dynamics yeah. uh and so flannery o'connor tennessee williams they used that civil war was also pretty violent is like one of the most violent wars fought on u.s soil and so there's like a big social impact and there's also movies like gone with the wind which is probably the biggest piece of lost cause ideology movie like Honestly, probably far worse than, say, like, Song of the South, though Song of the South also has a uh, lost cause ideology in it, or at least ide idealization of the Southern plantations. But uh, Gone with the Wind is like, look at these beautiful, this beautiful life, and they're slaves, and then, oh, and the Union comes in, and they're bullies, and they're burning all our beautiful things, and they're awful. Now, I'm not going to say the Unions didn't do like i'm not a civil war history expert i know war is violent and cruel to everyone involved um so i'm not gonna like be like that's all you know like no one burned anything like that's not true but this movie was designed to be like we sympathize with the wealthy slave owning south and the way the slaves were depicted you know with in heavy you know racial stereotypes uh so it's uh you know this fantasy is pretty ingrained in american culture 
and people want to absolve their ancestors of these of this evil so people would kind of be like oh you know we're fighting to defend our rights we're defending our way of life and it's, again they don't finish the sentence i think that's the best way it's like well what about your way of life was being threatened and i think combining confederacy even without vampires but like i talked about the power fantasy aspect of these supernatural romance this ya fantasy and if the south is basically a white supremacist power fantasy if this lost cause south it fits with like a modern reinterpretation of witches and vampires things that were seen as evil and other they represented death but it's like oh what if it's like they're tragic it's romantic it's something that's lost and they're also they're also cool and they have like no weaknesses and they're better than everyone else right and then they 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 become these sexy power fantasies that play into feelings of white supremacy it's like you're wealthy you're white you have power over the people around you but it's not going so far it's not like it's romanticizing nazi germany right there's a precedent for romanticizing this white supremacist aspect of society so i feel like that's why the power fantasy really fits not in a great way ethically but i think that's it's kind of like where that's me tracing those breadcrumbs and kind of seeing how it fits i mean i think in terms of this movie it's just like this is a not the <laughs> like you know this is like a teen movie i think it's just like they choose not to address really any of it mm -hmm. at all I think in the book um the other the ethan's ancestor is also named ethan right yeah that's ethan carter wait right so like he's like a you know confederate deserter but like the way that it engages with it in this movie is like again like that anything was better than standing yeah still. it's like a just, yeah it's a it just like, drop in the he's, movie it breezes by yeah in broad generalizations it's totally just like a backdrop it's a place setting and like look i i will admit i did have that thought when emma thompson was wearing that like antebellum dress with the shoulders exposed i was like god damn she looks so good but, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then it's like again like a perfect example of how like this movie engages with the aesthetics and like a lot of these things do i think to your point about kind of the um not true blood because I don't think that's true of true blood but of like you know interview with a vampire and this you know positioning mm. of them is like aristocratic even like that's like the good execution of it yeah um I think that you know yeah I just I mean fundamentally I'm just kind of like is a big studio teen rom-com like is it just like a botched a t <laughs> like you're like kind of fucked from the start yeah it's just you really can't engage with that meaningfully. Yeah, it's really strange. The other thing on top of, so kind of talking about how it's fantasizing about this version of the South, this movie really plays into um, a, a big gap that I notice is, you know, we have supposedly, according to the book, and I'm assuming this is going to be the same lore that they're working with in the movie, because that library is there is that casters were there first and then it would have been the slaves so then it would have been the gullah culture you know yeah. amas people what about the native americans that live there there's no mention of the native peoples that would have been there before so it's yeah. sort of like it's like it's like culture started when white people got there and so it's like mm -hmm. Not that I'm, I, listen, I'm not asking them to to play with Native American culture in this movie or in any movie. It's just like, it plays into our complete erasure of yeah. Native Americans before colonizers. It is just because I, I think Kayla is right in that, like, this movie doesn't need to talk about race. Like, this isn't about a movie about race. Like, this, I'm not expecting some, like, great moral thing from right. this what it is, is the like a point of them like, having the civil war in it yeah exactly it's like but they bring in these if you're things gonna ignore it ignore it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's like pepper it in you could there's a way to <laughs> it's almost like a, a way to that people only associate the south with the civil war <laughs> and it's like you could have something yeah. set in south, south carolina and have it not everyone's lives revolve around the civil war. You could have the witch backstory have nothing to do with yeah. the union soldiers burning I mean, down the mansion. Well, like there's then just... that gets rid of the whole story. Cause that's 
So that's what this curse is based on is that event. And that's the only yeah. reason it's in the book. But I'm also like, okay, if you're there's gonna- a million reasons people can attack someone and burn something down. You know, if, but I'm saying, maybe like, they think if, she's a witch you know, and they're gonna burn if, down her house because she's a witch. But it's, there's no, I mean, if you write that story, it's just like it's no longer beautiful creatures because yeah. that is how ta- you know yeah, that, that is how- that is the curse. And, and it's and that's just- the book actually uses like it discourses with this lost cause um ideology but then the movie it's presenting it to us not doing anything about it and in fact i would say it accepts it because ethan is like yeah cool i'm gonna be in this costume even if it's not actually ethan it's accepting it this ideology but the book doesn't do that this movie is taking things from the book and just being like boom i made a movie I think fundamentally the problem is aesthetically Southern Gothic does rule. Yeah. (laughs) Like that's really what it is. Is that like the aesthetics of it? Like, I mean, I love like Sally Mann is like a great Southern photographer, like got like, and that's kind of her, you know, like I do love that stuff. And like, I do, you know, especially when you get to the coast and you see all like the Southern lives, Oak with the dripping with the Spanish moss and like the, just everything about that, like is so, gorgeous but like I think you just do kind of run into a problem when you're specifically saying like a southern gothic with ties to like this era it's just like yeah I mean I would say like probably the a movie that I do like I love the movie Big Fish that's something where it's like you you're you know utilizing these aesthetics but we're just kind of you know not engaging with it on necessarily the level that beautiful creatures he has to. I think yeah. especially because it makes them, they founded the town. Like it, it's not just yeah. like, oh, they live here and people think they're weird, right? And they've lived here a few generations. It's like Macon founded the town. He owns the town. He owns the land and he uses that well, for Macon's power. Ancestors or ancestors. So it's like, and he's using yeah. that arist- aristocratic power. And mm-hmm. so it's like, I didn't go into planning this episode being like, we're going to talk about Lost Cause ideology in the yeah. South. And then it was like, Uh, I think we're going to have, like, this is going to come up. And then I was like, oh, like, I wonder if there's a history of, you know, like, witchcraft in the South or, like, I know, like, uh, like, Appalachia. And there's, like, so many interesting folkloric subcultures going on in the South. And I've heard, like, on the fairy tellers, like, these really great stories where it's like, and this is the king of Kentucky, you know, like, these kind of, like, this Americana. And I was like, oh, I'm interested to see how that might relate to this. And really, I could only really get, the stuff that we've talked about in what I was able to find strictly related to this. And so uh, I guess that at the end of the day, we're three white people, but it's like, that's unfortunate, I guess. It's just how I was like, oh, this isn't what I thought we were talking about, but here we are. But I mean, also like on that subject, like again, it's like what you're saying about this power fantasy. It's so weird that they, that the Ravenwood Duquesne family is like, position as they are powerful in both their powers and their wealth and yet they are the victims of this story that's just like a oh the poor people are the bad ones they're ignorant yeah and now the <laughs> you know it's, just, it's okay i guess i guess what it comes down to is if you think about anything in this movie for more than two seconds it all falls apart yeah like, the, the, <laughs> it is, it's all kind of Same why it ties into like same thing about the book. Like none of it makes sense. The the magic system is the further along you get in the book, it makes no sense. If we dig into this, like even like the light and dark stuff, it's sort of like, oh, if you get claimed by the dark, your entire personality changes because it's yeah. you, like nothing. If you think about if you pull the thread, the whole thing falls apart. It is a huge part of also why, like, despite starring many famous people and Oscar nominees and like a big marketing push I felt like from the studio this thing does not exist as a cultural entity at all because it is just fundamentally flawed yeah yeah sorry to that sorry and so my apologies but that was, I mean, that's most of the, like, the lore aspects. Now we're just kind of finishing up the movie, even though we've, we're still at the beginning of the movie. So I'm like, fuck, okay, we have to, I mean, Rosam is arriving. All right. So <laughs> as we, as we get there, uh, we learn that they're dating. Uh, 
Lena and Ethan, they're hanging out. At one point, when they're talking about leaving, she explains her curse. At her 16th birthday, she'll be claimed. This happens to all witches. They're claimed for either the light or the dark. 16 is just kind of an age Americans think sounds good in yeah. cinema. But then it's also like this. Driver's license. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Like, okay, driver's license. Got to take your permit. Got to claim for the light or the dark. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> And uh, so she's like, yeah, you know, family's coming for a holiday, but I'll try and get to this movie. Uh, and so we get Emmy, Emmy Rossum driving in, murdering the sh- cop on the way. Yeah. I'm like, that never comes up. Nope. Uh, just like speeding down. She, she shows up at this school where they're in gym on a team. I debated, I debated Please. showing up. So, yeah, I debated showing up to this recording in a tank top covered in like sweat because he's just like <laughs> in <laughs> that was playing as Ethan Waite. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and she like she's like, which one of you is Ethan? And, and all, like, everyone's just staring. Yeah, he's like, it, it, it's me, and she's like, okay, get in. And she well, sure, she kisses him. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, okay, excuse me, ma'am, this is ma'am? a school. Ma'am, you are wearing you are an adult woman. He's also she does seem she's like twenty some odd. Like, she's an adult <laughs> woman, and this is an underage boy in like and basically you're on school property. Lingerie. Not that that's the thing that makes it bad, but, but it's just bad it's just all like, around. Ma'am, you can't wear that around kids. Like, ma'am, you can't, you can't wear... just kiss children that you don't know. You just can't yeah. kiss children. Mm, it's like, stop. what are you? What is happening? So. But again, guys, she's been claimed from the dark, so she's oh, just duh. Came so it's fine. I get it. <laughs> Call Let's her Professor on. Humber. Yeah. So she uh, drives him to to like we're going to, to the holla to this harvest moon, whatever. And he's like, yeah, his eyes are gonna all... go play harvest moon. Lynn, I'm sorry. On the Humbert Humbert thing, Can it we is talk like about the books that she has a lollipop, and it's like her powers are in her lollipop. So she like. <laughs> Well, Which is also... a magic lollipop in the book. <laughs> yes, it's a magic lollipop. <laughs> yeah. no. I I really so wish funny that, 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 that it movie. wasn't. But also, can we also talk about the Jeremy Irons played Humbert Humbert? Oh. In that 90, 1990 something version of the movie. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh we're going so many places. Okay, so they uh, dark places. Dark places. Not beautiful creatures, dark places. So hey, they, beautiful darkness is in the series. So they they show up, and so his eyes are all bloodshot, and it's time for dinner. And she's like, "I just want to spend time with my family and her boyfriend, and we used to be so close." And they're all just, and then they're fighting, and the tables whipping around, and we meet Grandma, who I thought was played by Nana Rose from Riverdale, but she's not. Mm-hmm. Um, and like the, uh, and there's the other, other family members, I guess. And it's just zipping around and it's like, you're going to be claimed for the dark. Look at you. And she's like, no. And like pushes her out of the house. She eats her out and he's all yeah. like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he falls on the <laughs> ground. Yes. Yeah, um, I almost called her Seraphine. Oh my God. Lena is the one who's like making this happen. Um, but I don't know if that's like super clean in the movie it kind of to me i was like are they both doing this i mean Rossum, like really moves in to like kiss him or to do something and then it's like that she spins the table so that she's not next to ethan anymore yeah. like so that's yeah but it, yeah but it just it also goes on for so it's too long long it's like <laughs> yeah yeah. Of just people, there's so much people, so much of this movie, people shouting about, you're going to be dark, you're going to be light. You're That's all be... this movie is. <laughs> it's, and... it's all, it, and again, it's just like, what does that mean? Like, you no longer have choice because the curse is that the, in the book, it's just like that the this family descendants doesn't have a choice and they just get like claimed either way. In the movie, it's that just the women have no choice. <laughs> because i guess they're doing like a well, this Genevieve movie is feminist Eve and it has origin, something to say but... <laughs> yeah. but it is like a like even the genesis of evil like kind of yeah. like I, that like that's what it's trying to go for yeah. i guess um 
but, but like it's just so unclear like okay so like if you get claimed by the dark now you just have to be a dick and murder people with trains i guess and yeah it's, it's not clear any which way and so it's like i mean i guess they didn't have anything to work with they didn't have any ideas for solving that they had plenty of ideas for the ending though because they the, at the end or because then they're like okay so uh, me and Ridley, I was like, Emmy Rossum. So me yeah. and my cousin, Emmy Rossum, we were kids together. We would do homework. We'd watch Disney. And then she was scared of being claimed for the dark. She didn't want to hurt me. So she leaves. And then we see her running away. And then the moon's there. And there's a shadow. She's having this, like, this thing where she's like, my chest right in between my breasts. And it's, like, open. And oh, like, it's is very, she... like, yeah. And sexual. it's like, is she supposed to be 16? Because I... I don't want to yeah, watch a six-year-old girl that 16. way. Yeah. 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 Uh, and she sees these guys on, and she like lures one to be hit by a train. And it could have been a girl, if they were creeps, it could have been like a girl slay moment. But, uh, but she's just dark. She's just evil. She just seduces men. Uh, yeah. They go to the movies, I guess. It's like the plot gets a little. So they're at the movies. Zoe's like, you're freaks. Um, they go to see like, final destination six i think and yeah they so he she reaches in his pocket it's like oh you have the amulet and it was a bunch of loose milk duds as you as one does <laughs> exactly yet again another it reminded me of napoleon people. dynamite <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was like oh my god it's actually tots Oh, you're, yeah. you say it's a piece of Southern culture. You have your locket and the milk duds in your pocket, your locket right? and your milk duds. Yeah, yeah. Pocket. Loose milk duds, not just like a little box. Yeah. Loose. And, then, uh, and then he's like, oh, sorry. And she's like, let's touch it now. And I'm like, in a theater? Yeah. It's so weird. And then this is where the vision plays out in full. Okay. Yeah. So here's what happens. There's the burning plantation. This woman's running toward it. It's crazy. Oh my God, there's this guy running behind her. Bam, he gets shot. She goes to him and she's like, oh my God, no, you can't die. Okay, I'm going to do a spell, just a spell. And it works. And she like, Ugh, you know, like has yeah. like an exorcism. And I'm assuming it's her soul comes out, washes over this Ethan guy and he comes back to life. Her eyes glow. She looks like what's her name from Twilight? Uh Victoria. Yeah. She, she's got red hair now and it's curly. And her eyes are glowing. She like she needs to cancel herself, Rachel Brown's hand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And then she fucking kills this guy who was presumably her lover. And then she goes on a rampage in town. Yeah. Now, this is the character assassination I was talking about. What really happens is Genevieve goes to her house because it's been it's being burned down by by the union who are the enemy of apparently. Um, so her house is being burned down, and he was a deserter, and then he gets shot. I think by a union soldier. I don't know, but he gets shot, and Ivy, the house slave, is there. And Genevieve's like, we've got to do something. Ivy takes Genevieve to get the Book of Moons, which is in her family's possession. And she takes the, the book and she does a spell. And it works like a hot second. She gets like lightning striked. She becomes dark, essentially. And it works for a second, but then he just dies. She does mm. not kill him. She is then just cursed to live out her life as dark and then she finds out that she has then just cursed her entire family every descendant of the duquesne line will be claimed they have no right to claim themselves and uh there you go this that's it. also what i remember and this ties into some of the changes is that like part of the reason it doesn't work is because she tries to bring him back to life but not sacrifice someone else well, so she, it's like, and it's because the moon is different. Like, right. the full moon is something, and a new moon is something else. But doing it when there's no moon is like mm. not good. So she like essentially upsets 
the balance of nature. Yes. So with like in the books, the reason that her family is claimed instead of like given a choice is to like make sure that the family line doesn't upset the balance uh, of like the yes. and star. And so like it's to basically keep it even. The I curse suppose. has a purpose. Yes, and the then- curse has a purpose. Because they Perfect. do not explain really no. light and dark as cosmic forces in this mm-hmm. universe and why, yeah. if they should be balanced, I'm like, is there supposed to be good and bad or is this bad just happens? It's like very so unclear. Then later, in the, and this is also where it's like the book ending and the film ending are like very different. In the book ending, Ethan gets stabbed by Seraphine. He dies. It's Seraphine's plot to turn Lena evil by like making her do the same thing as like Genevieve essentially. But this time she she blots out the moon as she does in the movie um, so that she like doesn't have to make a choice. And then Macon sacrifices himself to give his life so that Ethan can live so that when she does the spell correctly, there's like an equal exchange of power. So she's not like upsetting the balance, which also is a much more meaningful, like there's like a sacrifice behind, like it's just... I don't really know why they changed that. I don't because it's what like, and it 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 maintains the love story because I mean we're obviously getting ahead of ourselves. I mean, do we care about anything else? Let's just get to it. (laughs) Okay, let me. We we're actually there isn't actually much in between now. It's like just meanwhile. So they do that in the movie. They see the flashback. She screams. They're like even Satanists don't like sequels. (laughs) and <laughs> call me a satanist then i guess <laughs> and emmy rosam is making out with another underage boy in the alley i should clarify it's, it's link. link it's link. link yeah it is yeah. link but i yeah. just i then i was like i don't oh. want to sound like i'm accusing emmy rosam of anything it's this ridley. character ridley yeah so ama and make are like you can't be together and he's like we have to be we don't care and they explain that so she's a descendant of okay. genevieve and but she knows he, this in the book. Like he is one. also a descendant of Genevieve because he's a descendant of Ethan Wade. No, no, they don't have children. No, together. they don't. He dies. But they he's a descendant from him. He's like an uncle. Like he's not like son. It's not like a great great grandson. It's like a great great grand uncle. Yes, they would have like, been kind of related, but they're not because they never had children together. Okay, because this this does not make it clear no, this movie. It and I was like, you're really gonna Which also in a by movie the way, set in the South stereotypes of people in the South dating their cousins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, you're you're gonna do that? I'm like, really? There's why do they have to be related? Like Yeah, no, they're okay. not related. Thank you. I'm happy about that. Arguably a movie you shouldn't have questions about. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, which I guess if it was that long ago, it's like they would be fairly distantly related. Still gross. But, but they're still, they would still be kind of bringing attention to it if they don't, they didn't explain it well. So it's kind of yeah. like, wait a second. I think it's Halloween. Seraphine is trying to get into his house as Mrs. Lincoln with brownies. And he's like, no, she put a ward on his house. She's trying to break in. He runs in. She's in a magic vortex prison thing on a stair in the most like, modern like house. lightning around them and then it's yeah. like why are they just make are they and also then are they just standing there for forever to keep her trapped in lightning like she's just not, i think it's just because like, he shows up. i think okay. it's just because he shows up and they're like he's here oh, Boom. I, we're putting up the show oh, to me it's like she's in a gown on a stair like this was posed i like <laughs> what does this girl do when she has to pee what is she all have to walk her up there i was just like no so he shows up and he can just walk through it anyway or and they're they're like we're in love they they go to ama and she's running this oh shit he can protect her yeah because he's like my life has been crazy uh and they they go to this library that nancy reagan made the casters move from dc uh because she's the one person they're scared of uh and they i mean same and they (laughs) <laughs> they're going through all these books and they find the book of moons in the special library that holds all the spells okay so here's hey, the big know. difference from the book is this book went missing because like Genevieve used it and that bitch took it to her grave ah. okay. well actually Ivy threw it in there and was like 
you get to keep this hun <laughs> but what they do is they're like oh my god we haven't seen the book of moons in forever it's been lost i'm like wouldn't the first place you look is that lady's grave apparently not but they dig up her grave Ooh. and they get that book in the movie it's just hanging out behind a secret door a pretty obvious it choose- <laughs> well, okay not a secret door but the book chooses who lets read it yeah. Also, that Amma's thing in the movie is like, I can't tell you about stuff until you ask me, which is the it's <laughs> that's that's exactly how it is in the book too, but like right, which it's is- more natural there because it's like this is the rule. But this, this is so stupid. comical. It is. It's, it's like so I can't I- tell you anything because you didn't ask. It's like I don't know to ask, Amma. You have to follow. You have to follow you the correct dialogue danger. tree. <laughs> the correct dialogue tree, exactly. I'm yeah. an NPC. I'm not a real person. And yeah, people are in danger. Children. So they look at the book, and now Lena gets to study the Book of Moons for weeks. And they keep hanging out, and uh, they she fight. They are mad. He's like, "You're being a bitch right now." She's like, "Maybe I am a bitch." He and- called her a brat too, a bitch and a brat. And I was like, "This movie hates women." And uh, they're horny and they're lighting the sign. Uh, I think they have they have sex, right? That's that's the vibe we when get. When they light that sign that on fire. Sign on fire? No, when he, he picks her, her up, car, so takes her to the car. Unclear. Yeah, because I was like, that doesn't happen know, but... in the book. They are chased. Because I also was thinking, I was like, this is also a pretty chaste love story. It's like not full like like Mormon vibes from Twilight, but it's like I did interestingly think that the like the actors like did have physical chemistry in the movie i would agree yeah they seem right they're actually i felt like they they looked like they would be a couple like they felt and they like i thought that was one of the stronger Mm -hmm. aspects of the movie i like that they were a same height couple too yeah (laughs) yeah i get a lot of that so yeah, he's making at one point is like you need to leave her. And he's like, no. And it's like we've had the conversation before. I'm like, is love not magic? True love conquers all, baby. I mean, that's where they end up discovering they're like, oh yeah, no, like he can protect her because the love between them, right? Yeah. And then she finds something and she's like, You need to leave. Uh or like, can you like go ahead? I just want some time alone. And then I love this scene because so she comes out and she's like doing fantastic acting but the crying acting is really really good here but she's literally like telling ama like the only way i can break the curse because she killed someone she loved i have to kill someone i love basically to restore the balance yeah and she assumes it's ethan and ama goes oh my god what are you gonna do i was like (laughs) she's 16 how dare you ask this child what she's gonna do about this huge decision are you gonna murder the kid that's by i'm the second mother too i guess i'd be cool yeah, with that. I... <laughs> yeah so in the book though her decision is actually do you turn dark and kill all of the people who are light in your family or do you turn light and kill all the people who are dark in your family which also and is not a like not a good decision deed still you know like, what I mean? Like, either way. And she yeah. has a lot of family in the light that she loves, but Macon is technically dark, uh-huh. so she would kill him. And so the theme for him is sort of like, doing what's right isn't always easy. So he's he kept that secret from her about, like, how she could break the curse or whatever, uh-huh. or like, what would happen. If she claimed herself, she would have to make that choice. But and, now that I'm thinking about what's would, happened at the end of this movie, I'm like, I don't know if this moment where she's weeping makes sense. It doesn't. Because also, if you're light, you can't be with Ethan because you physically can't be together because your powers grow and you literally can't touch. Like, you won't uh, ever be together. And I literally was like, you've known this boy for like four months. Your entire family could get wiped out if you go dark and you could then be, you know, evil. But you would still be able to hang out with your boyfriend because Seraphine's like, we have a way for you guys to be together. Or you would kill your uncle and all the dark people in your family. I'm like, sorry to this man. Get rid of him. Get rid of your, Why your is- mom. Like, no. <laughs> 
why is if Megan is dark, he's not evil though? Like it just I, I never I read all of these books. It never made sense to me. It never he's mm-hmm. like st- like a mentor figure to her. Okay. Again, like we said, even in the books, like he's make sense. a better guy, but like it's the the definitions of darkness and light. Again, they make no sense. What are these cosmic forces? I've been watching Has Been Hotel, an anime musical series about angels and demons. Uh, and then, I mean, like, what is good and evil is like a theme in that and in, in a lot of things yeah. involving angels and demons, right? But it's like, this is has the being claimed by the light or the dark is so central. At least that book is providing more a little more context, but still what these forces are, what makes you a light caster or a dark caster? Like, is it just your magic is goth or is it like murdery? Yeah. It's like, yeah, but, I also think in the book, Macon says that he's not a caster, he's an incubus. But I thought an incubus was a type of caster. So maybe he's a creature. He's actually is, is an he incubus. He just, he's just a dark creature because he's an incubus. But he's good because he's not a caster. He didn't... I don't know. It doesn't make there's sense. There's no... This is the thing. Once again, 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 it's like if you pull on these threads, the whole thing just, falls apart. You have it no more sweater. Mm-mm. Yeah, no more sweater. You are naked in the cold, buddy. Like, <laughs> so this movie makes you. Seeing in the cold, he's complaining that it's way too hot out for the holidays for Christmas, and she makes it snow. And he asks her to the Christmas dance, and, and then uh, he wakes up in his bed. Yeah, she's on. Potentially, she's she's potentially. Night. probably. Potentially. Honestly, he wouldn't even notice. That man looks fully dressed. The most evil person in this movie is even based on the fact that he wears shoes to bed. Yeah. I agree. You know what? Kill him. <laughs> uh, and so she, Sorry to this man who so, wears shoes to bed. That was his choice. She doesn't get a choice. He does. Exactly. Uh, and so True evil. Ama is just like, oh, we're hanging out, you know, like, oh, like, is she Lena coming over for Christmas? And he's like, Lena? Emily says she's weird. We don't hang out. And she's like, what? And he's like, what are you talking about? And they go to Christmas church and the priest is the pastor is talking about about sacrifice Sacrifice. and uh, people don't like that word. And and so and she's getting ready for her December 21st birthday. Uh, Also ready for the reenactment. And he's like, awesome. I look great. Uh, Emmy is seducing Link on a boat surrounded by surrounded crocodiles. By I really think that was, well, I no thought that was the back of a truck. No, it was no, floating in the river. They're like in the swamp. <laughs> it's wild. I and thought it was a cool a visual, on. though. Sure. Yeah, it's a cool visual. It makes no fucking sense, but love it. And yeah, she's, she's like, teaching him magic, how to like make a bullet in his hand. Which, okay, this does not happen. In, uh, yeah, uh, it makes no sense. It, it, he mortals can't do magic. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Link isn't technically mortal. I don't know. Didn't get through the rest of the books. Here's the thing about what happens next when, like, Lena's having her um 16th birthday party, which is weird. They read some kind of prophecy, which has never been introduced. Kind of until <laughs> I, this moment, know, everyone I'm, alludes to it, but then they have literally full the on prophecy. Written out prophecy. It's the prophecy from the Book of Moons in the book. So that's why it doesn't make sense well, to me. It, okay, also, this is where the protagonist has shifted. Because now the story is fully about Lena, and Ethan has no idea about the context of anything. But I will say in that moment where um, Ethan and Link are like, oh, this is really boring. Do you want to shoot each other to get out of it? I was like, that does, is believable that to was me so for like a funny. teenage boy. I, I <laughs> thought that funny. was... That's the best part of this movie. I was like, <laughs> yes, they understood the assignment. That was actually like super funny. It is strange yeah. because he has not, Link has been seduced by her for months, but he has, he's that guy that gets a girlfriend, drops all his friends. We have, he has book, not. Ethan's like, dude, Ridley's bad news. Like, don't be with her. But Link is like, I think they live in the swamp together. <laughs> Link and lena like have a relationship like have a friendship they literally i don't think that they share a single scene in this movie no until she blasts him she puts him on blast like throw them around because he's like sorry i didn't mean to and yeah yeah 
also okay so when they shoot each other here's my question were they supposed to have like paintball cut like what you know what i mean like what's the blanks i think there was probably something that was like supposed to like hit them so maybe and it would have to show up for them to get out of it to be like oh i was shot like time to go home yeah maybe 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 paintball how does this rip a hole in that or something i I assumed the battling in these was a lot more theatrical that it's like because if you're recreating a historical battle, you're not just LARPing, you're like doing a show of like the soldiers went this way yeah. and then this happened. And the women are all dressed up in gowns, and I'm like, were they just there? Which I didn't I do know there are some yeah. civil war battles where people picnicked to watch. Well, but they're they're treating it like the it's the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> like, yeah. You gotta get your big hat on and like go to the yeah. for reenactment. I don't know anything about reenactments, but yeah, they're is- just twirling in their gown. And again, Emma Thompson did. She girl looks slay. Like it's so literally good. Like it's like, and she knows she looks good too. <laughs> no, She's like, oh my god. And yeah. so, so they're do they're the doing book, the okay. I just so you did mention the switching of the protagonist in the book when Seraphina stabs Ethan, he like dies. Uh huh. And then we switch to maybe like half a chapter mm-hmm. of, from Lena's perspective and then Ethan wakes up. I think that's what they're trying to do in the movie and it's they make him forget and he's like no longer invested Relevant. in the story at all. So he's not a protagonist anymore. So Macon just like stares yeah. at him in the mirror at one point. So I guess this is when they switched bodies or whatever. But so she they're at the birthday party right. and she sees him get shot. She's like I have to save him and they're like no. And then Emmy and Seraphine are like, he's dead. Be claimed by the dark. We'll be a dark witches. We'll be Ryan Murphy's coven. We're taking over the world. And the moon is there. And then it's revealed that it's not him who died. It's just her beloved family member. Uh, she was really rude to and actually probably didn't care about. So, but it's, she's like, oh no. But then didn't she have to kill someone to do the bound, the person she loved most? So I guess that's Macon. She- well, he swaps. Just... He fully swaps places with him, and he gets shot. Yeah, yeah. So I don't actually know where Ethan is. <laughs> nope, in bed wearing his shoes. <laughs> the monster that he is. <laughs> um, yeah. No, like, does she have to kill him, or does she just have to like? She has to sacrifice someone she loves. I, I think it's the life, like, has that to... it's like the life transference. It's that like yeah. there can't, you know what? Yeah. Confusing. I don't actually, I don't actually know that it has to be someone that she loves, like a person she loves for a person she loves. I'm, I'm unclear on that. I thought I think it's just that like one must die so the other can live. Uh, I yeah. just and so then she's like, then she grabs the moon out of the sky, uh, <laughs> and the Rossum's like, oh shit. Yeah, and then she's like. And Emmy Rossum is like, remember when we were cousins and I left so I didn't murder you? Please let me go. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> you did me a solid bet. And she, Emmy does also look great in her di- in her dress. Uh, Emmy Rossum is slaying in this entire movie. Yeah. yeah. And Also uh, chewing scenery. We love it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then she has a magic jewel with Seraphine and like whips her Literally. dark spirit out and like wraps her in thorns and then she just becomes thorns. I'm like, is her spirit in there? Is this like a hexus from Fern Gully situation? Uh, like what's going on? And then I thought like Mrs. Lincoln was gonna come to too and be like, what the fuck? Or at least be like, oh, you exorcismed me. Thank you. In the book. It's like Seraphine like unzips the skin of the human and walks out of her like that's how they describe it essentially not that comically but like she literally like bursts out of her she's not like dead dead but like it's like freaky and um the way they did this it was like lame (laughs) she's like a goat like a evil spirit like it's just like a you know generic demonic spirit yeah Yeah. because i because like you would see her true form and her true form isn't like a real person in this movie because it's CGI. Yeah. So, which I wasn't like totally opposed to when it like came like, out. Fine. It's like, oh, like it's like, oh, okay, she's because you so can't get better evil. than Emma Thompson. I, that's tr- no, it's true, and it's like, like, oh, she's so evil that she just becomes like a CGI blurb. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. and so then she's part dark, part light. She hasn't made her choice. She's a chimera. 
uh, Ethan doing a college tour with Link. He stops by the library to see Ama before he goes to NYU. And he has a little meet cute with Lena. He's like, oh, we never hung out. Is this book any good? Is the book that they had talked about before? And she's like, yeah, you know, uh, have fun getting out of here. They like chit chat. They mentioned that Link's mom is in a sanitarium. So I'm like, who does he live with? <laughs> the parents yeah, are Ethan's dad, dad, dad now. Have his dad, yeah. Link is <laughs> Ethan's <laughs> dad now. <laughs> What's the horse in Pinocchio? Very anti dad. <laughs> like the very... worst. One person has a father. I'm actually dead serious. There's... Like even Emily, it's just always like my mom. <laughs> this is the war on There's fathers. Not a single dad in this movie. This is great. I. This is so funny. Uh, and so. Then they're driving, and then we see her studying. She has half of the golden eye from Twilight. That this is what they get when they're dark casters. And then they cross the town border. This is some once upon a time bullshit. Because there's always weird <laughs> border magic in that show where they like drive yes. by the sign, <laughs> and he gets out and he's just like, stops, he stops the car, and he's like, Lena. Yeah. And um, we end there. We end that. Can end- I say something? I I I kind of like that ending. I was kind of like when you know they get out, they just cut to her. Like I guess she hears him from across town, and then I was kind of like, wonder what happens next. Oh, I'll never you're know, like, know baby. What I was gonna say like you're like, oh, I want that sequel. Well, do you know what happens next? Because it looks like they're not gonna do. do anything from the books. So no. So. No one knows what's happening next. I guess the whole thing that comes next is that, like, Lena, I guess, like, once again, kind of knocks the world out of balance. And then someone again has to die. But then they keep guessing about who it is that has to die. At like one point, taxes. they think it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like at one point, they think it's hunting who's like, Macon's twin who's not in this movie at all and then it's not it's Ethan so she has to push him off a water tower and then an entire book is him in like this hell essentially I mean not like not in a in a more like it's more like the inferno version of hell like there's different levels it's not like the, mm-hmm. the you know Christian hell and then he just has to do a bunch of stuff to get out of it I it's yeah I don't think I'm going to be catching that one. She's just fully not in the last book, I feel like. That's weird. They recast But then when he the comes back, they can... She's a word. The words L, the letters <laughs> L-E-N-A were not available. But he comes back and then they can touch and it's not explained why. Hmm. So then they can be together, I guess, because he's a wayward. Confusing. But I, what I'm like, so she's, because of her, he's going to be stuck in the town. That's a cancerous sore. Unclear. Is she withholding him back? I don't... Who knows? Who's to say? You just turned, you, this movie turned you briefly Southern. <laughs> Did she withhold him back? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess we're in our protagonist question. Who is our protagonist? Ethan or Lena? And if we're going by who the character with the strongest desire, would it be Lena because yeah. she has actual shit going on? She... I mean, her desire is to basically figure out what's going on with her. Yeah. Because, like, I would say he's a protagonist in maybe the first 40 minutes, maybe. Because he's interested in her and learning her. about her. His goal is her. Yeah. But then it's like, n- he's not really even helping her. He's just moral support. There. Yeah. It's also hard when it's, like... I think part of the reason the second half when she is like the protagonist like part of the problem is is that she's not active because inherently the conflict is she, that she doesn't want something to happen you know what I yeah. mean it's not like she's like pursuing anything or has a goal her goal is not have something happen to her but she doesn't really have a way yeah. to like and she doesn't know that she can claim herself until what's his name tells her she can but she's like, I don't know what that means. And then she's like, I'm going to yeet the moon out of the sky. Which, also, really quick, in cool. the book. Ethan's mom is actually pretty important. She was actually the librarian, the keeper of the Lunar Libri in the book. So she was actually in the magical world. And this fucking movie had the audacity to suggest that Macon and her were a thing. 
Oh yeah. What I forgot the about that. Fuck is that about? But then Alma was like, but don't worry. Your she mama, your a good southern woman, she loved her husband. And I'm like, isn't that is making I thought Megan was gay. Um but I guess did he have a kid? You're just saying that because he had a cane and a and a complicated vest. <laughs> <laughs> gay coded friend of dorothy what can i say uh, <laughs> uh, so uh and then who do we ship how are, are ethan and lena a ship for us they're both kind of dorky and awkward and i didn't mind them together after she stopped being mean i kind of think no it seems like the only thing they have in common is that like they want to make out with each other like I, like I just don't think that there's much of the relationship teenagers than, like teenage hormones yeah yeah, yeah. I didn't I mean, they're feel... not gonna last that's for sure right I, I guess I didn't f- I'm trying to like because I feel like I could see characters that are like a uh, Ariel and Eric right like a pretty static like he's pretty one-dimensional like straightforward but it's like I could feel the love in a way that I think it's Maybe it's because Ethan sits out the climax that yeah. it's like, I do think I ship them and like, they seem to fit together. They're definitely horny for each other. And they, they, they seem to actually genuinely like each other. Yeah. Uh, and they had way more chemistry than like Bella and Edward, if we're looking at our supernatural romance month couples. But I do think because even when the thing where they're working to solve the problem is just them reading you know it's like and he can't even touch the book so he it's not even like a national treasure we're doing this together kind of thing it's like i think that it loses steam and i lose they're so passive yeah Yeah. uh they stop being a couple at that point basically yeah and the the force that they're fighting is because we're talking about our antagonist I'm like, is it Macon? Is it Seraphine? Is it Ridley? And I guess Seraphine is like the main antagonist. It's the system, dude. But it is the system. Like, that's the thing is it's like, it's not like Seraphine is. is making this happen. It's like, just this is the rules of magic. He's taking run- advantage of the system. It's like, and it's just run by these, there's no like being that's like running it and making it Mm -hmm. suck. There's no, or trying to enforce it because that's their job. It's just an impersonal magic system with like no inherent values or like they don't even say exactly why they need to be balanced or like what's going on. We don't even know if, even if they're light, if they're good, because they don't do anything except for hoard wealth clearly right oh my god like if you want to talk about like some of the people accused of witchcraft it's like you know women who were healers in their you know who yeah. actively like knew things about you know medicine or I, I, yeah I, it, yeah they're not good if the, they're light they're just not evil yeah yeah the only person who uses magic to help other people is ama because mm-hmm. she does the right. talk to her ancestors but like they don't like heal people or stop bullying. Like, they don't even have like a Sabrina kind of moment. You know, it's like uh they just exist. They're and this under- leads right. to- like wh- yeah, like why isn't there that moment where Lena sees like Emily bullying some other kid and like does something like what yeah. where is that like what what does she use her magic? Yeah, because- what is their sense of purpose? with powers is it just to right. exist like if that's the case then i don't know I, i'm not invested in that i think it's because the characters are so self-centered like they're so invested in their own problems there is no really relationship they have with their world other than they dislike it right like so there's no they're only ever the victims like there's no one else that they can help nothing that they stand for yeah, and it's Seraphine is like, oh, I'm going to take over the world. Like, get rid of, like, we should get rid of these mortals. Oh, yeah. She's like, like, no one will miss them. But it's like, okay, but the light side, what are you doing to like help preserve the mortals? Or you're just like, we're neutral forces. Like, Like, what does, and what is she doing to kill them? Yeah. Oh, wait a second. On the subject of, because then there's this thing where Ama at one point is like, oh, like some casters have been apart of the civil war and i'm like okay is this like kind of like the percy jackson thing where it's like indirectly you're implying that like a son of hades was responsible for like nazi germany like, yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like it's that thing where you're like because it was like what like the last like world war was like the fault of like children of like yes. Yes. big three it's like is it that where you're like the casters are also responsible maybe yeah i mean i I mean on which side i I guess we know but like which 
I think it's a, it's an easier explanation than to go the J.K. Rowling route and create a complicated franchise where then you're having to explain why they didn't get involved in the Holocaust and also saying the antagonist is the one trying to get people to be involved in World War II and or go in a Minions route where they need to be frozen in the tundra so they don't work for Hitler because they would if they could, you know, like. Again, it's just the threat. Like, don't. (laughs) It's just this. So this movie falls into a trap. I don't think we've really covered any of these movies. You get them a lot with things like descendants the school for good and evil Uh, a lot of there's a lot of media where good and evil are purely aesthetic and i think this movie falls into that Mm -hmm, where good and evil are aesthetics that you can wear they're uh sexy black dress you know it's like and i think that's a little unintentionally insidious or just people are afraid to define those things or they don't know what they are and it's vibes alone or it's just an equating of those two things. Well, because if you were it's to a, it's say a binary. that they're good, that these casters who are late are good, you would be saying that these slave owners are good. <laughs> so they don't want to talk about that either. It's just, it's a binary that cannot stand any interrogation because fundamentally people are both. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, yeah, like, and ins- But I feel like the they rarely really hit it well in those shows where good and evil are aesthetics. At least right. like, like in spirit, like they might say that at the end, but like at the right. end of the day, they're both, there's so little interrogation of those. So I guess that leads us to our big question. Was that your fantasy? No, this movie made me so angry that I wanted to defend the book that I didn't find good. Um, that's all I have to say. It's not my fantasy, and I'm, but I can't say that I'm sorry that I made you watch it. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be sorry. I'm so glad I watched it because, again, this is right up my alley. I love bad movies, and I'm yeah. glad I read the book because then I could be like, because otherwise I've been like, where the fuck are they getting all this stuff from? And I yeah. read it and I'm like, okay, I see it. You could have done something better. But it's like, if you want a better version of the story, listen to the audiobook and just of the first one. I can't recommend the other ones, but the first one. Because there's some interesting ideas. There's some charming moments. And Lena and Ethan actually have stuff in common. They have conversations, you know. Get your romance there. Yeah, I'm gonna say this is this is not my fantasy, uh, because I truly could not understand what was happening, and I I also I feel like a lot of magic fantasies, like when the main characters use magic, it it often plays into a power fantasy that I don't always like. I think it can be done very charmingly and very well. Like so, I'm not like a hundred percent like no, but then it can also be very like self-martyred i don't know it just doesn't doesn't rub me the right way and also but the main reason is because i was like what the fuck is happening i think that's that's just the core of like what did i just watch what did i on the flip side i do kind of regret listening to the book because i'm like well what is that experience because the only reason i was able to put this plot together is because i knew about the book and i was like okay they're pulling from the book here i I can't imagine how (laughs) jarring that would have been i was wayward uh, you know as they say yeah <laughs> incomprehensible <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, i was like this is inspired by someone's southern gothic romance pinterest page <laughs> i think you're actually really? right i think you they, are right they slapped the title on it they're like this is a book right <laughs> boom boom so thank you for jo- joining us on our beautiful creatures journey kayla Thank you for joining us. Uh, are you plugging you. Mean Girls the Musical again? No, I'm plugging that I didn't know this was going to go on YouTube too. And please don't be mean to me in the comments because my self esteem can't handle that. Everyone in the comments is actually really nice. Uh, are they nice? Okay, good. They really just talk about what we talk about. Yeah. They will call out stuff that we say and be like, yes. Or they'll be like, well, actually, did you know this? And so they're actually very yeah. So Okay, I'll go looking for some fun facts. Speaking of comments, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave us a comment. Did you watch this movie? And I, God, I hope you do. I think it's worth watching be- with with friends. I feel like this yeah. is so much fun to watch with yeah. friends. I mean, I texted um, Kayla when I was watching it because I was just like, oh, I, yeah. need, I need 
Yeah. No and I wasn't texting journey. you because I was like, I have to do the reveal that I wa read the book. Yeah. What's your favorite change from the book? Or you know what? Can you explain to us what light and dark is? Yeah, what, what does light and dark oh mean in this God, universe? Yes. If and you know. if you know, let us know because and we don't know. We don't know. And if it, you know, you can even say what it means to you. Yeah, what this does is our mean, sharing circle. If you're if you identify as dark, what does that mean to you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but it. yeah, so uh, go ahead, smash that like button subscribe to the channel and leave us a comment also hit that bell notification so you get notified when we do our next video uh if you are listening on itunes or wherever mm -hmm. please give us a five-star review let us know what you love about the podcast and yeah instagram tiktok at not my fantasy pod all right uh tune in next week for a movie a that new we movie. can't prep for a lot because, because we will have two days to watch it before we record? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be on theaters. We're talking about Lisa Frankenstein. And I am oh, actually fun. legitimately excited because I actually found the trailers very charming. And I was like, I hope it's charming. Written by Diablo Cody, directed by uh, Zelda Williams, who is Robin Williams' daughter. Ooh. So I think it's going to be super fun. But we'll be talking about Frankenstein, obviously. Yeah. So I have so, to read another book. Another book. A third book for a but third kind goodness, of romance. I wanted to read <laughs> one book for each month. So 12 books this year. I'm already at two. And for me, it's not even February. Yeah. So thank you, podcast listeners. Thank you. And Kayla, thank you for joining us and for recommending this okay. beautiful creature of a film. So um, last thing. Why is it creature instead of more creatures i guess i know i was Thank also you. like we what is that into it. <laughs> what does the title mean we can't, they, we can't go back in it's in the book and i was like that's the title of the book don't remember the context don't remember how it came up i actually think beautiful creatures is in references to mortals oh also in the comments full immortal or they're just calling humans mortals Let yeah us is it just like a muggle thing All right. so many questions more more questions than answers <laughs> Bye. Bye.